All right, everyone. For this, everyone's made a new level one character, so we've all played before, but this is the first time we'll be playing these characters. Uh, Drew, why don't you start introducing yourself? Uh, I'm Drew. I'm playing Lilo Underbow, uh, Halfling Rogue. Uh, my name is Delvin. I'm playing Nob, the Human Warlock. I am Catherine. I'm playing Scats, the Halfling Barbarian. Uh, my name's Jamie. I'm playing Veneran Wallace, a uh, half-elf sorcerer. Uh, so, we're gonna pick right up on the road. You guys are all, for whatever reasons you have, uh, maybe you've shared them with each other, maybe you haven't, um, heading towards the city of Riverhaven, which is one of the, the larger uh, trade cities in the area. Uh, but you're still a few days away when we pick up the story. Um, none of you have necessarily made this particular journey before, or at least you haven't made it particularly often. Uh, but you think you're about five or six days uh, worth of travel away, depending on the, the weather and, and the traveling conditions and so forth. And uh, after you've broken for lunch, uh, in the middle of the day, it's a drizzly, dreary day, you end up coming across a, a wagon that is stopped in the road. Why don't you, before I move you over to the new screen, why don't you guys uh, show the marching order that you're, that you're currently in? I mean, uh, I'm not point. I will be point. I am scary. Ah. Up ahead, a woman stands beside a wagon, which has a man in the driver's seat slumped over. As soon as she sees you, the woman is going to, to rush over to you, and uh, my husband has suddenly fallen ill. I don't know what's wrong. Could you please take a look? Oh, poop. I don't Isn't know that said about in this. <laughs> I like how Scats just said, oh, poop. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's irony there. Uh -huh. uh, please, I, I don't know what's wrong. He's not uh, I really don't know what I'm doing, but I could take a look, I guess. Could you please thank thank you so much? All right, now we'll cautiously approach I will the come obvious with you. trap. Mm, I'll go up to. Okay, I want to check out what's in the wagon. Okay. Uh, is anyone yeah. else? Uh... Stay, stay back. Okay. I mean, Nahab will make his unskilled medicine check to see what's wrong with the guy. <laughs> Nine. Uh. You think you have a, you have an inkling um, that it might be that this gentleman appears to have attached to his hand a crossbow that he fires at you. Okay. Wow. <laughs> um, so, and that will constitute a surprise round. I know it was kind of an obvious one, but <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because now it just assumes everything is a trap. But he was right. It's a trap. Indeed. Uh, so yeah, so uh, initiative order, initiative oh, rolls I, rather from everyone. I am lovely. I went from a twenty in the start to a four now. <laughs> <laughs> Did very well on your uh, your introduction initiative roll. It's really nice to know things are right back to a normal. That's uh, true. All right. So uh, that crossbow fought, shot was a twenty. I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that that hit you. That will hit. Yes. All right. You know, I'm gonna roll again because you were right up against him, and he actually should have had disadvantage at that range. Yay! Hey. <laughs> Especially because of this level one crossbow shot can drop any of us. <laughs> yeah. That is true. Um, okay, so that he's going to miss. Uh, the, the woman he was with is going to also take a uh, swing with her scimitar at Scats. Crit miss, that's a one. Uh, so, so that will be that. Will be that. Uh, so, uh, top of the initiative order, Nam. Nah. Well, let's free this guy of uh, the peskiness of having nightmares. By killing him. <laughs> I'm a assuming an 18 will hit. An 18 will hit. Four or five damage. And Scats. Scats is going to use her Albert against this evil lady. Right. If it'll roll. Go, 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 go. 19 will hit. Five damage. And uh, Venorin, who hung back a bit. 
I'm going to shoot firebolts at them. Which one, are you, which one are you shooting at? Uh, the guy sitting down, I think. Okay. Uh, 26, you're never going to believe this. That will hit. Oh, I am shocked. Four, six, and that gentleman uh, returns to being slumped over in his, uh, in his wagon. I think we can diagnose him this time. <laughs> uh, so, uh, it is then their turn. However, you've taken a good amount of damage out of them. And... It's at that point that a number of bandits emerge from the woods around you. Uh, one of them is going to fire a crossbow at Lyle. And miss with a nine, I assume? That is very true, and I am very thankful. One of them is going to fire a crossbow at Venorin and miss with a seven. And one of them is going to fire a crossbow at Nob. Thirteen? Nope, eighteen AC. All right. Oh, you've built another one of those characters. Absolutely it's ridiculous. Not, it's not hard. Scale mail, a little bit of dex, and a shield. No, no, I know. If you have no dex, scale mail and a shield is a 16. It's not... Uh, the, not the woman who, who deceived you will swing her scimitar at scats. And miss. Miss with a 10. And the other gentleman is dead, and as is very clear in the rules, you do not get a turn if you're dead. Uh, so we are back around to Lyle. Not back right, so around, now. first time. Step up. <laughs> To get the flank, Flames and I will swing mattered. my rapier. Seventeen, I'm assuming hits. Yes. So I do that. And I get my sneak attack. Thirteen damage. Okay, she is very, very dead. Uh, Nob. Well, all the nearby people are dead, but mm -hmm. now we've got crossbow people. Uh, so Nob will fire an eldritch blast at that guy. 14 will hit. Nine force. Wow. I know I meant to keep these guys' names and numbers. I'll have that for next time. Uh, Scats. Um. Gonna turn. And throw a javelin at this one. Okay. 14 will oh, hit. I hit the halberd instead. Oh, I see. I don't have the javelin thingy set up. Darn it. Ugh. It's probably a similar role, I was gonna though. Say. Because I believe the javelin is still strength. Or it's, or it's a... Yes. So it should be a, the same role. The damage is different. Yep. Yeah, I have the damage here. <laughs> well, with that being the case, 14. So, right damage. Three. Venora. All right, everybody brace yourself. I am casting a spell. No, oh, everybody move. <laughs> this is going to hurt a lot. I am now cast Mage Armor. <laughs> <laughs> Which you would think would not be that big of an event, but there's a possibility that I now have to roll off the wild magic table. Uh, you do not. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I'm kinda, I kind of think like, Crit misses will trigger it, and a few other, maybe a few other things. Um, casting mage armor on yourself, I don't want you to be, like, scared to do that. <sighs> well, I'm a wild mage, so, you know, I, I'm prepared for fear. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Let's see what these bandits can do. One of them's gonna fire at Lyle. 20. Oh. Ridiculous. Th min damage, 3. I can't. So don't have to like it. That's true. <laughs> One of them's going to fire at Nob. 18. That'll hit. 7 damage. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, and one will fire at Venorin. And 6 will miss. The lady is dead. Uh, Lyle. Alright. Well, I'm assuming it was this one over here that I'm pinging. Yes, the one to the south. Alright, uh... Not designed for this, but I'm going to do it. Toe to toe. Run up. Hit him with my rapier. 12 hit. 12 hits? Yes. For 9 damage, I don't get to keep my uh, sneak attack, though, because he kind of saw it coming. You, you did run up to him. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, 
Which of these guys just hit him for almost killing him? The one to the northwest. Okay. Uh, firing an Eldritch Blast his way then. Alright. 16 will hit. 9 will be enough to put him down. And the knob's gonna crash down and cover behind this wagon. Okay. Uh, scats. Alright, I'm gonna throw another javelin at this guy. And I actually have the roll now. 19 will hit. Seven, wow, seven piercing damage. Okay, he is not looking so good. Barely looks on his feet. Uh, Venorin. Uh, which one was the one that was just uh, shaken up? Was that the one to the north? The one to the north was just shaken up. To be honest, they both look a bit wobbly. All right, I'm going to fire on the one to the north. Okay. 22 will hit. Oh! Min fire damage. Let's find out if that's enough to trigger a... Nope, it's not. Uh... <laughs> The good news is, one fire damage, he had one hit point, so... Woohoo! While it is a failure, a personal yeah, failure... Not too much. Yeah, it's definitely a personal failure for your character, but it's nonetheless effective. Uh, I actually got confused and just threw a disposable lighter at him. <laughs> uh, the one standing next to Lyle is thrilled to have somebody in melee range. Swings his scimitar. Twelve. That's a miss. All right. Uh... Uh, this one is dead. This one is dead. There's actually only one left on the field, and he just went. Uh, Lyle. Alright, well, as predictable as it may be, I'm going to swing on the guy who just tried to attack me. Seems fair. That's a 21. That one's definitely going to hit. 21 will definitely hit. For 7 damage. He had 2 hit points left. Suck it. He is dead. Now it's time to loot the bodies. I'm going to go get my javelins. Okay. Pull him out of this dead body. Excellent. So as you walk up to the tree line... Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Funny. Nothing <sighs> happens. Uh, okay, so you, you have acquired your javelins. Um, you can spend a little time looting the bodies. Um, they don't have much on them. Uh, between all of them, you find four gold and twelve silver. Uh, so that that's what happens on the the when you're about five or six days out from Riverhaven. Uh, fortunately, the rest of the day. Oh, um, before anyone gets clever, the cart is very clum- uh, it, it's in complete disrepair. You realize that you, you couldn't actually load anything into it uh, or move it very far without it collapsing. Can Not we repair? Oh, take can a short rest. Both to the dead. Sorry, there was a there was a real question and a fake question there. Go ahead, Drew. Can we repair it with the bones of the dead? No. Now I was going to suggest that we take a short rest and use the wagon for the campfire. That you can do. Or, or the corpses, either way. Yeah. Or both. Burning corpses are, in Nob's experience, not as pleasant smelling as you might think. Kind of bacony. I mean. Hmm. Mm, okay. Drumsticks. So I'm going to assume that your plan, uh, I'm mostly, Nob's uh, plan to take a short rest is very self-serving as well, because he he's has, about to, uh, he's about to die. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that said, there's a couple of you who could use it. Well, Lyle. Uh, yeah. You guys can smash apart this piece of crap cart. Make yourself a little fire. You just had lunch, but who cares? You can eat again. Um, All right. So you, wanna... you have at least a few days of rations left before you have to worry about food. I'm yeah, I mean, my short rest is, it's like 10 minutes for a short rest. It's not... Yeah, yeah. No, it's an hour. Oh, it's an hour. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's an hour. So that's, a, that's a valid point in regards to rations. I, it started with the Explorer's Pack, so I had 10 days worth of rations. How long have we been on the road? Uh, I will say you were starting this with 10 rations, 10 days. Okay. You you planned this long trip on this long road, so you would have uh, you would have picked up. Your character has history before it got here. Um, yeah, you, you know, in fact, why doesn't everybody make a note on their sheet that they have 10 days worth of rations? It's not going to be a huge part of this game, like micromanaging your resources like that. But I am setting up a world where there's a certain amount of scarcity involved. And uh, at least early game, I'm okay making you seek out opportunities to keep yourselves yourselves fed. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so... Uh, and, and if we play the part where we have to pick our style of living, I choose squalor initially. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so you guys take a short rest to the side of the road, and after after some healing and some bandaging and so forth, uh, you set out, and uh, a few hours later, just walking along this road, the sun the sun sets. You uh, you make camp for the night, have your evening meal, share your stories. I'll just assume you guys are making smart, you know, adventure type decisions. You're posting a guard. You're, you know, you're rotating guard status overnight. And there's enough of you that you can all get a long rest uh, while they're also being a guard. Um, luckily, the guard's services aren't necessarily needed that particular night. Everything goes without, uh, without a hitch. Um, which also means you all get a long rest. So go ahead and... Those of you who used hit dice, you get your hit die back. Um, anyone who wasn't at full health, you're at full health. Yay. That whole that whole thing. Spell slot reset. Spell slot reset. Um, and actually, uh, not only does that day, the rest of that day go without event, uh, the following day passes, aside from being crappy weather, um, it really does pass without much event. Uh, so you actually, you, in theory, got two long rests. Not that that helps you. And we're down two days of rations, then. Indeed, yes. Thank you for... I almost forgotten, and I just made that rule. (laughs) Uh, So, yes. So you were down to nine after the first day, and down to eight after the second day. Arithmetic. Uh, You wake up, and you feel like you're you're probably three or four days out. uh, And it is... It's that... You know when it's not really raining, but it's just constantly drizzling? Yeah, Oregon. Okay, it's Oregon. <laughs> it's known as a Northern California thunderstorm. There you go. Um, and it is simply unpleasant out. Um, you know, you're you're kind of you're soaked. You're wet. You're you're not thrilled. Uh, you weren't able to start a campfire the night before. Uh, but you know, you're getting there. You're getting close to where you're. You're only a few days away from where you're headed. Um, and uh, you're you're setting out in the morning. And uh, after a couple hours of walking, who's who's in the lead? I think I am. Still in the lead. Okay. You don't spot this, not with your 10 perception. Uh, so who's behind Scats? Uh, honestly, I think our marching order as it is is oh, okay. probably going to so, be a good standard. All right. Everyone else is... Uh, yep, 14. 14 will spot it. Uh, well, either way, after a couple hours, you, what, you, you spot the weirdest thing. Around the corner up ahead of you is a... Uh, a gentleman running with his hands cuffed in front of him and his head's kind of swiveled back like he's looking behind him. Um, he's in very tattered clothes and he seems to be running, you know, not at a full pace either. He seems like he might have been running for a couple days. Um, because he's paying so much attention to whatever's behind him, uh, he doesn't see you until he's, you know, only maybe 40 feet ahead of you. And... Uh, when he turns back around, he sees you. He just goes like wide-eyed, like a deer in headlights, and then he makes a sharp right, and he bolts into the woods. Have a nice day. Perfectly see normal. Ya. It could be normal. You have no idea. It's your first time in the area, so uh, you're free to let him go. I mean, it's up to you. I don't see any reason why we would follow after him. I mean. Scats isn't particularly intelligent. Should probably just, you know, smile and wave. Have a good day, sir. That's fine. Unless any, any okay. trouble that runs away is perfectly fine with me. That's fine with me too. Uh, okay, you guys. Is, is there anything chasing after him that we should be concerned about? Well, he seemed concerned about something chasing him. Well, I mean, I do have but a reputation down the road. I didn't think it got this far inland. <laughs> I take I mean, it we don't actually see anything else down the road that he was in You, you do not see anything behind him or where he was running from. Um, you can, if you'd like to tell me that you're now being particularly cautious about... I'm going to... Yeah, Indeed. we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to be cautious, but I'm, I'm also going to chase after him just see if I can see where he ran off. Okay. I'm not going like, to chase, chase him. I'm just going to chase him to the edge of the wood and see if there's where he went. Okay. Uh, luckily, because of all the, the dampness and wetness that's come about uh, the last couple days, um, he... It, it's leaving pretty distinct tracks in the uh, in the ground. Uh, you can see that he bolted into the woods. He doesn't seem to be going anywhere in particular. Just into the woods. It was a terrible movie. Um, hey, yeah, that was strange, I guess. 
does, does is he like you know just running around in a circle and we'll see him again in four days? <laughs> I, I can see this being a Monty Python sketch. Um, okay, so with with nobody seems you know, interested in actually pursuing him, which is probably for the best, really. Uh, as as was said, uh, any trouble that runs itself away from you saves you the trouble of running away from it. Another hour or two down the road, you you come across a part. You notice that uh, the woods are are thinner uh, to the to the north of you, um, and it looks like there's a clearing on the other side, and there is a there is a caravan. Uh, it looks like what it looks like somebody's made camp uh, made camp there. Um, now it's probably about noontime, you know, or high sun, whatever they call it. Uh, you would most likely be, you know, stopping to to eat soon. Uh, if you have people who already have a campfire and so forth, uh, you do smell the campfire, um, but you don't know who these people are. I'm going to cast mage armor, <laughs> <laughs> and then the rest of the party blows up from wild magic. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm waiting for a one or a two to be rolled on on the die. Um, any any innocuous spell that you you roll a one or a two on, I think will do something. <laughs> uh, I don't think we should get close to them. They're almost certainly working for demons or devils. They could be a good food source. The Not them, as in the people there, as in they kill them and take <laughs> their food. Barbarian. How barbarous. I'm so Yeah, proud. they could be, but we don't know if they're willingly working for them. I don't know. I'm bored. You want to go check it out? Let's sneak up there. Let's not. Cautiously. Sure. Should I roll a sneak? I can roll a sneak. Sneaky barbarian. Stealth. <laughs> um, how about we let the rogue stealth? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That one thing you're good at. Hey, I've proven I'm good in combat. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean that was not meant to be uh, exclusively that one thing. <laughs> Including but not limited to. <laughs> right. That's that specific thing that you're good at, yeah. Exactly. Alright, can Real I have game. a can I have a stealth roll from, from Lyle? Fourteen. After all that build up I was expecting like a two. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh so you, you tiptoe through the woods, um, using the trees as cover. Uh, it's handy that you're a halfling. You draw much less attention to yourself. Very true. Uh, as you, you reach the edge of a small clearing, and uh, you spot a few bodies. Uh, there's, there is a campfire. Um, there's also, there are, are two wagons uh, that some of the wheels have been knocked off of. They're completely uh, torn apart, uh, as are some of the people. Okay. The hub it telepathically is, uh, uh, speaks to Lyle and asks what he sees. Nothing to be concerned with. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Doesn't look like there's anything over there. He relays to the rest of the party. All right. Uh, I'm gonna. Is there anyone like obvious that I can see? That's living. Uh, no, N- nothing appears to be alive in the immediate area. But you're also trying to peer from like. The edge of the clearing behind some cover. Okay. How far is it from the edge of the cover to the next bit of cover? Uh, it's a big clearing, so you can you can move around the whole thing while remaining in cover. Uh, but you're kind of you're pretty much at the edge. Any further in, and you would not really be able to find much cover. All right, I'm gonna work around to ninety degrees to my right. Okay. Uh, so now you're looking at it. You you were heading north. Um, now you're kind of to the east of it. From where you are, you can see the backs of the the two wagons. Um, they were to the east of the campfire, so the campfire is kind of on the other side of the wagons, and most of the bodies are around the campfire. Um, you can't really see much from where you are. Anything more than, than you saw before. Do the wagons look like they're moving, like anyone's in them? Or? Uh, no, they're not, they're not covered wagons, um, so... Unless somebody, like, if somebody was hiding in them, you wouldn't be able to see them from where you are. But uh, there just there doesn't seem to be any movement uh, in the camp at all, aside from the, of course, smoke from the the camp, the abandoned or the 
seemingly abandoned, I don't know what to call it, the campfire. Just the campfire. Okay. I'm going to run up to the wagons. Okay. You know, stealthily, or you, you just... Uh... It's a clearing. Yeah, that's fair. Do you want any of the rest of the party with you, or are you still doing this all on your own? I figured last, you'll come when I scream. The last thing we heard from him is there's nothing to worry about. Yeah. And now you're too far away to talk to you telepathically, so... Exactly. I would just assume at this point that he's using the bathroom. Uh, okay, so you, you get up to a wagon. Shaking um, it. Uh, you are now... You're, so now you, you have a certain amount of cover from the other side of the... Like, you, can't, you couldn't really be seen from the other side of the wagon. Uh, I'm going to try and hop into the wagon and take a look at what's there. Okay. Perception, uh, investigation... Uh, let's make that investigation. Okay. All right, so it's an eight investigation, not exactly stellar. That's all right. Um, there are two bags of grain that are intact. Um, it looks like there were more, uh, but they were dragged off. Uh, there's like a trail of of grain that leads. Either, you know, there's like a pile in the side of the caravan, the the, the wagon, because it's the wagon's it's where it was up enough that it's leaning. Yeah, and uh, it actually there's a now that you're closer and. And you can see there's a line leading off into the woods. Which direction? Uh, to the north. Okay. I'm gonna go back to the party. Okay. Uh, you you make it without event, without incident. All right. So you know that thing where I said there was nothing of nope. Yeah. yeah. May not have been in the entire truth. There's a couple wagons up there. Some dead bodies, but whatever. Looks like the wagons got looted. Probably carrying grains. But back in my day, we used to hide valuable shit in bags of grain. So, well, if everybody's dead up there, we can take we their want... food without incident. Yeah, Score. there were two bags left. Yeah, well, two bags in the wagon. I checked. There was always the other wagon. I should have checked the other wagon. Now you're going to want to so go And, and if, if nothing else, free wagon. Woohoo! Who's going to pull it? Were the horses in good condition? Horses were dead. Okay, right. so we have were barbarian food. <laughs> <laughs> the, the wagons, like, were smashed up. Oh. The, uh... You are dead set on us not having a wagon this campaign. Uh -huh. Can we Franken-wagon it? Well, that's not true. You just don't get a wagon tonight. <laughs> Is anybody proficient with carpentry tools? I have navigation tools. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have hemp and rope. I can lash something together. <laughs> and a pirate should be good with knots, so he should be able to help lash. Veneran, do you maybe know mending? I, I did not take that one. Okay. No wagon today. But yeah, let's go through the grain. Okay. So as a party, you want to head back? Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. So, so are you, you're less stealthy, obviously, as a big group. Um, are you going to attempt to continue the stealthiness or are you going to rely on Lyle's assessment that it doesn't appear to be anything? Moving? I think we should still be stealthy. No, I assumes everything is a trap. Be stealthy. Right. Okay. Then stealth rolls from the party, please. I got a 19. Oh, and everyone else floats. <laughs> Thank you. So I just... Not bad all around, 19, 13, 13, but the barbarian <laughs> apparently was singing or something during... Crush, crush. Or, yeah, just crush in the forest the way barbarians do. Well, I mean, it's a halfling. How crushy through the forest hey, there's, she be? there's bushes and sticks and stuff. She's, she's or roughly the equivalent of a kettle drum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so you guys have made it to the edge of the clearing, the the spot that, uh, that Lyle had previously arrived at without... Uh, before he, he felt he couldn't go further without just being out in the open. I tried to be tactical. And then I brought a barbarian. Yeah. Shall, shall we roll the barbarian toward the carts? <laughs> <laughs> Fetch! Get it! Yeah. Barbarian bowling. Alright, well, let's let's go up to the carts again. I, I'll check the other cart. Okay. Sure. Um, the other cart is completely empty. Okay. Alright, well then... In the time-honored tradition of the sea, since neither of these are worthwhile, I'm going to throw fire in both of them. Well, we, we, we have to get the food out first. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, you, okay. you grab the, uh, there's two sacks of grain. 
eating raw grain is probably not the the best thing in the world but um if you ran out of rations you certainly could do something with it well from what we've heard about riverhaven we might be able to make some friends just by going hey a couple bags of grain that's true too when if you show up with uh negotiable but I- but I have Mage Hand, which can lift 10 pounds, which would pick up a small stone and use that stone to mill the grain into flour. Knob it- also has Mage Hand, so we could actually build a system of grinding wheels. Yeah, we can get super high-tech. <laughs> <laughs> and I have more important things And, to and do. when we're done, our Mage Hands can high-five. <laughs> with, with his navigation tools, uh, Lyle can tell you both where to go. <laughs> Lyle will tell you where to It'll go. Tell us where to stick it, yeah. <laughs> but we can use our mage hands to stick it there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fire. I set fire to the wagons. All right. Well, based on Lyle's suggestion, Nob does go through the bags of grain to see if somebody hid something valuable in there. Uh, you you do not find anything valuable hidden in the grain. Okay. Well, there's more grain to the north. Just follow the yellow grain trail. Um, as you get to the edge of the clearing and the uh, the dirt is is less matted down, um, uh, you start noticing large animal prints in the like ground. Bigger uh, horse. Oh, uh, what if, you, if somebody wants to give me a nature check, you can try to identify them. Okay, not my best roll, but I got a three. Uh. <laughs> All you know is it's something that's bigger than you. They're probably demon dogs. Are you sure it's bigger than me? I mean, I fit in the footprint. That doesn't mean it's bigger than me. <laughs> Making some pretty broad assumptions there, dude. Dear God, somebody other than me make a nature roll. I will try making a nature roll. I got nothing. <laughs> Ten. Uh, <laughs> that these, looks... lo- these look like bear tracks to you. Well, bears are not known for Bear being track? distinguishing what's valuable. I don't know. I don't think it's worthwhile to follow them. They're also not known for carting away large amounts of grain. But they do like honey. They could have also had honey. Well, it, the grain may have been in a picnic basket. Hey, boo-boo. The wagon Thank did you. look a lot like a picnic basket. What is a wagon if not a big wheeled picnic basket? That's true. Okay, yep, fuck this. Might. We're going to go somewhere else. It could have also been adjacent to other food, like honey. And so forth. Yeah. Uh, anything else you guys are doing here? It sounded like Lyle was bored of the situation. Well, he already set fire to the carts, so I mean, that's true. At, at this point, we're just waiting for the fire to jump into the forest off the clearing and start burning the forest down. Waiting for the problem. Um. Are you still playing your warlock? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pirate. Have you ever tried camping in a forest that you just set on fire? No, but I did go horror camping nice once. Just... That was not very good. <laughs> fire spreads a lot faster than, than people walk. To be fair, it's been raining for days. Yeah. It's a, isn't it still kind of... It's pretty, it's, it's pretty drizzly. Yeah, It's yeah, unpleasant. On... I was expecting it wasn't going to spread beyond the clearing. All right, well... <laughs> We have two options. We can continue on the trail as we were going, or we can follow the grain. Um, do we have any reason to believe the grain is fruitful? Like, do we really need grain, or do we think it might be worth something to somebody at the delivery point, or what is our motivation for going after grain? Well, everything's somebody, worth something to someone. Somebody might appreciate just a couple of bags of grain that we've got here, just because last I've heard times are tough up there. But I see no reason to go chasing after bears to see if they've got more grain. West it is. Oh, bears. Okay, so it seems like there's a let's get back on the road kind of thing. Yeah. Yep. Sure, why not? Yep. All right. So the rest of that particular day, aside from being crummy and rainy, uh, is relatively uneventful. Uh, Towards the end of the day, uh, as as evening is setting in... um, you, you spot at the edge of the forest a the body of a large boar. Uh, it looks to have Great multiple hit. arrows sticking out of out of its uh, flanks, and uh, one arrow that presumably is the one that killed the animal uh, lodged in its in its neck. Is it is it is its underbelly still intact? 
Uh, yeah, the animal, other than the arrow shots, uh, the animal is looks intact and it looks relatively, uh, relatively fresh. Bacon. Excellent bacon. Mm. Is somebody approaching the pig? Yes. Be who's careful, it? it's probably poisoned. Who's approaching it? It will have poisoned itself if it was not killed uh, too recently by the organs decomposing since it's not been, uh, not been cleaned and gutted yet. Lyle's uh, approaching. Okay, so Lyle approaches this pig, and uh, once you're up close, you see it looks like this was this this animal's only been here like a couple hours. It's it's not fetid or or you know or rotting or anything at, at this point. Yeah, what would you like to do? Cut out the bacon. Okay, why don't you uh, why don't you give me a survival check, or you can call somebody over if somebody else is better at survival. I got an eleven. Oh, eleven. That is not bad. Uh. You get enough bacon for to feed the entire party tonight, and uh, and probably breakfast tomorrow. Yay! We'll, we'll Wonderful. count that as a full. We'll count that as a full day's rations. So you, you, tomorrow, basically tomorrow, you won't be spending any rations. Nahab will wait about an hour after people eat before he'll try any of it, though, because <laughs> that's fair. It's probably poisoned. <laughs> yeah, no, just just to be safe. Well, remember a lot of a lot of complex proteins and toxins break down when cooked. So, mm, plus. Bacon. Bacon. Come on, if you were gonna die, wouldn't you rather die by bacon than any other means? I actually can think of better means to die, but but it's definitely up there. I my my higher options I can't mention given that we don't want the stream to be extremely offensive. That was right where where I was as well. <laughs> yeah. I have no problem going the offensive route. Bacon is the top of my G and PG rated ways to die though. All right, so bacon for dinner. Bacon for dinner, uh, and then followed by your your night in your. Should, should should we be concerned that clearly this animal was killed by a hunter who then did not show up to collect it? Some hunters are lazy and show up a day or two later. Not you... not many hunters do that because they all died from food poisoning. I mean, if you'd like to, uh, the only Maybe. piece of information you have is the arrows. If you want to look at those while you're uh, over dinner. You can yeah, give me that's... a survival, another survival roll. Okay, well, while he does that, I'm going to write a nice little note. Thanks for the I bacon. Survive. <laughs> 16. Uh, you think that these are either the worst arrows that a human has ever made, or some of the best arrows that a goblin has ever made. And it's pretty much 50-50 on which, is, which it might be. I stand behind my declaration of leaving a note, thanks for the bacon. If they're goblin arrows and we leave a note, they might not necessarily take that as a thank you message, but more of a taunting kind of thing. <laughs> That's what it's meant to be for everybody. <laughs> Fair enough. Then, then they will have interpreted the message correctly. <laughs> so, you guys, uh, it, it, the, during the night, the wind picks up and the, the rain increases and you all struggle to get the... Uh, doctor recommended eight hours of sleep first watch uh don't worry about the watch you guys are not nothing's happening tonight uh in the morning uh you you finish off the remainder of the yummy yummy bacon and uh you you set out on the Stand road. back everyone i'm casting major <laughs> <laughs> oh let's see what happens nope no, he doesn't cast mage armor. No, nothing horrible happens. That we're no, nothing, of. nothing horrible happens. I'm gonna wait till it's really disadvantage. Like, right, if it happened right now, you could probably just deal with whatever happened. Yeah. <laughs> he it says happens. before we're all hit with a fireball. Okay, so then the fireball. <laughs> um, you set out, and and uh, the the morning is a little bit somber because um, the the first thing you see, other than more long winding road is uh, what looks like a very mangled corpse. Uh, lying on the side of the road is the grisly remains of some poor soul. He appears to have only been laying dead for perhaps a day, but animals have already started to work on him. Hey, we found the hunter. Bacon. You might have been the hunter. Shall we uh, loot the corpse? I mean, investigate the corpse? I'm on board with it. Carefully. Yep. Yeah. Give me somebody give me an investigation roll. Alright. 
Eh, yeah, ten's good enough. Looting the corpse, like, you have plenty of time to do it, so. Uh, you find another four gold. Woohoo! I'm rich, bitch! <laughs> Times are tough. Gold is, is in short supply. Well, gold's not in short supply, but not much of it resides with those who aren't uh, particularly well off anyways. This guy's not very well off. He's very poor off. I'm sure he's ba- had better days. Um, a few more hours of walking, and uh, just before you're going to stop for your midday meal, um, you find that uh, the the increased wind. At this point, the wind is actually starting to to pick up quite a bit. Uh, you can tell there's a. Uh, let's see, Drew used to be a, a sailor. Uh, this is exactly the kind of weather you'd get before a major storm settled in. There's a storm brewing. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have a side question. Given that half of our party are halflings, how many meals a day are we stopping for? <laughs> they're they're meeting you in the middle. <laughs> Every other day, they they make you stop for a couple extra meals. But uh, it's all about I think, the compromise. I think the deal is you don't care how many meals they have; they just can't go through their rations faster than they, normal. They probably each took one of the the ham hocks uh, uh, or the hams off of the uh, the boar there, and have just been munching on that ever since. That's um, uh, eventually, the next thing of note is there's a the wind has knocked down a large old tree, um, and it's it's actually blocking the road. Uh, do you want to move it? You can easily go over it, but you also know that uh, this is a major road. This is this is genuinely a question of how altruistic do you feel like being? Yeah, not that altruistic. I got uh, no problem blowing it to smithereens. Oh, I'll uh-huh. shoot some bolts at it. Yeah, now hop fires and elders blast at it. Mash it if I have to. <laughs> All right, we get some we get some smashing practice in. Um, Smash. Are you guys just using cantrips and general attacks? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Want us to roll damage? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, no. Just give me give me one roll. One one just flat d twenty roll for each person who's helping smash. Yeah, I'm not helping smash. All right, you're all fine. If anybody rolled like a two or a, or a lower, you were gonna like sprain your wrist or something. But <laughs> or wild. Um, <laughs> so instead of I don't uh, cast spells limp wristed. Oh, <laughs> wild surge. Nope, no wild surge. Um. Okay, so you guys, instead of moving the tree out of the road, you just blast a hole through it, and once again the road is clear. Uh, you you stop for lunch. Um which is difficult. You can't really cook anything today because the, the rain is just is just horrendous. Um, the storm, uh, you would actually, uh, Lyle would actually say, this this is the storm. The storm's not coming. It's it's here. Um, and you, you do what you can with, you know, blankets and so forth to make shelters that you can eat under and then and then continue. Uh, at a certain point, the, the road becomes basically too muddy to pass. It is getting dark, and there is another one of those, the clearings. Uh, Again, this is a well-traveled road, so there's kind of spots along the way that have been used repeatedly and are turning into uh, campgrounds. Somebody has put up a KOA sign. Um, This clearing is completely empty, uh, unlike the other one, which was full of dead people. For now. Is it it way defensible? Um, There's a... I've seen a lot of dead people around here, and (laughs) a little nervous. That's I'm fair. pretty new to the area for this number of dead people. Um, so it's there's a good amount of, like there's only four of you, so you wouldn't have a very large camp. Um, and uh, so the, basically, what you'd have is a good thirty feet on all sides of you that was clear. So it's defensible in the sense that you could see anything coming. It's better than sleeping right on the road. Hey, what's up about it? So you guys again, you you set up the best camp you can. You do the whole guard thing. Who is taking first watch? First watch. Excellent. You probably want Nob to take first watch unless you want to spend about a half an hour trying to wake him up. Not my problem. <laughs> well, it is your problem if you're first watch and he's second. So it's so a little bit of inter-party discord over who gets first watch. Fight, um, fight, fight. Ring of fire, death match. No- Nob, is, Nob is happy to take whatever watch is going to be the watch. I'm just as a player letting you know whoever's taking watch before Nob is is going to have some trouble waking him up. Fair enough. 
I have firebolt, so I can do it. <laughs> I can smash him. There's a lot of ele- elegant ways, apparently, to wake up. <laughs> <enough>. <laughs> um, so, uh, Lyle, uh, a few hours in, as your shift is getting to the end, and uh, you you do the natural what nature calls, uh, and you go to the wo- don't worry, you go to the woods too to relieve yourself. No, hold it! Um, it's a trap. <laughs> I wouldn't have said don't worry. If- I wouldn't be taking actions for the player if there was something like that. Um, and you notice a little ways, there's there's like a, a thin, thinner strip of woods, and then on the other side there's another clearing, uh, much smaller, and there seem to be some um, carved stones. They're both they're all like half egg shaped, sticking out of the ground. There's three of them, uh, kind of around a middle point. There's a half egg shape. Are they almost a shell shape? No, no, they're like they're stone. Oh, so they're not the three shells that he's going to use. No, they're not <laughs> going to hit three shells. Wow. No, these oh. are these are actually these are probably six feet tall. What do you mean you don't know how to use the three shells? <laughs> okay, I'm going to go the check the out shells. the stones. Okay. Um, there's there, there's nothing particularly interesting about them. They look really old. Um, and they sure. sure. Ooh, crit twenty three. <laughs> Crit. There is there is some writing on them uh, that you notice. It's it's largely worn away, uh, but there is a little bit there. Um, it it's not in a language you immediately recognize. Um, um, he critted. We should also know if they're igneous, metamorphic, or sedent- sedimentary. <laughs> uh, yes, they are definitely one of those. What's the name <laughs> of the guy who carved it? I mean, it was a crit. Uh, you actually haven't heard of these before. You've, you know, you you read up on, you know, things to know when you're traveling to Riverhaven, uh, and these were not mentioned. Goddamn river people. Um, I like how they're river people now. They're not just people who live next to a river. They're river people. Mm-hmm. Eh, same difference. They'll be golem someday. <laughs> exactly. Um, if you want to make a a, um, why don't you make? Go with religion. It would be some sort of intelligence based I'd say religion, history, or arcana, depending on the nature of the language you're thinking of. If yeah. it makes you feel any better, they're all the same role for me. Religion's better. Uh, okay, so you 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 know, as happens with languages, while even when languages fall away and, and become less used, uh, bits of them always survive in subsequent languages. Um, so you pick out a few things that look like maybe they're old forms of modern words uh, one of them is the word dead uh, one of them is the word slumbers and one of them is the word wake is any of them the word photogen <laughs> were any of these yeah. stones not carved by an emo punk <laughs> <laughs> uh, you also recognize um, there's a, a symbol that is still used to um, on maps to indicate the area of the map where the the never veil is you are here could be your this could be a big you are here sign. all right uh, that said if you would like to copy it down you can certainly take it with you and maybe work on it over time and get a better translation or you know any translation yeah I'll make a rubbing of it I'll okay. use my map kit and uh, so okay so I'll make you've rubbing got... of all three stones and... okay um, having done that, you can go back to the party. Uh, oh, short. They're gonna say by rubbing them, you've unleashed some magic. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. As the stones explode, uh, no. does my um, genie show up? <laughs> uh, so you can you can go back um, to the to the party. The rest of the night uh, occurs with relatively little incident. Presumably, at some point in the morning or sometime during the night, you show the symbols to the rest of the party and unfortunately none of them um it's called breakfast yeah really none of them none of them has any better idea they some of them pick out some of the words that you already had but um, I'm gonna go bring everyone over during the daylight to see if we see anything else okay um yeah I, I assume anyone who wants to during the day you guys can go back um and and again other than these look to be 
Did you get? Oh, you critted your investigation. Damn straight uh, up. You're, yeah. you're guessing that the age of these things is probably about two thousand years. Well, it's not written in infernal or abyssal, so we don't really need to worry about it. Okay. Uh, would anyone like it to do any <laughs> rolls rolls on these, or or are you you're going to accept Lyle's uh, evaluation and his plan to to keep working on the uh, translation? Um, I'll do an arcana check just just in case. Okay. What are you gonna do? Lick the stones? Yes, I'm gonna lick the stones and I'm gonna smash them into your face. Okay. So Scats licks the stones, <laughs> and uh, you know that you know when you touch your tongue to a nine volt battery, that's what you get off. <laughs> um, uh, get off by licking nine volt batteries. Uh, uh, <laughs> just let's see if you do a wild magic roll. Oh, a three. Uh, on a two, I would have done it. So, you know, Arcana is really a knowledge based thing, isn't it? Uh, it's intelligence. Yeah. You, you've you never heard of this, uh, but somewhere near your village growing up, there was a similar set of stones um, that had. Uh, you can you can barely remember what they had, but it was uh, what the actual words were. But you remember that people told you they were messages from the gods uh, concerning predictions of the future. Fun. My, my my parents were historians, and I've always had an interest in history as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna think back on any of the history that I've studied and see if this seems to fit in with anything that I've heard about before. Okay. And I basically recall having bumped my head as a child. <laughs> no, with a 12, uh, uh, we'll have to do some geography and figure out where you guys are from in this area. Um, but you seem to remember a story about this as well, but you don't even remember. You just remember something about three stones um, and that they had some sort of, and that they were something people studied, you know, because they were they, they were interesting for some reason. You don't remember why. Putting together what... what uh, Scats knew you kind of think it might have been the same thing, whether they were the same stones that uh, were near Scats Village or they were yet a third set or they were this set who, you know, you don't you don't remember enough to, to be able to identify what they were. I think we should take the stones and get moving. Oh, no, these, I, these uh, things are uh, take stones. Okay, well, see, I was imagining some, like, handheld size stone. No, six nope. feet tall. See, that just proves I have a short memory span. I don't know. You're, You're a barbarian. barbarian. You can handle exactly. a couple of them. I'll lift. Lift I'll with your legs. I'll supervise. They're like, they're like twice the size of me, but that's okay. Yeah. No, these would be these would be hundreds of pounds, if not more. If only one of those wagons. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, is it a new day? Uh, well, no, that is the, um, well, yeah, it, yes. Okay, one more ration down. What are we at rations now? Uh, I'm uh, at seven now. Yeah, we're all at seven. Yep, that's what I was at. I just wanted to check to make sure I wasn't, like, eating a large amount or something. Well, you might have been. You have you been? Halfling barbarian. Half Bacon. <laughs> Look, you're a barbarian. You need the extra calories. Exactly. All right, so... We've got the information from the stones. Do we want to continue following the trail, or...? Sounds good. I mean... By trail, you mean the road, the main road? There's no real other trail here. Is, is there any indication of anything from the stones that we should go in a different direction? I, I, I don't remember having heard anything that would point us in some other direction. Well, I mean, it indicated the scary other side or whatever, so... Yeah, we'll stay here for now. Is that a, is that a direction, though? <laughs> for all I know, these things form a portal to the other side. That'd be fun. Um, should we throw you in the center of them and see what happens? It's the middle of the day. I doubt anything interesting will happen. You guys have walked all around them. They're not like, this isn't a you disappear here and reappear somewhere else kind of deal. At the moment. <laughs> Yet. You, yeah, you haven't figured out the code word. <laughs> Uh, so. Yeah, as long as uh, we think we've you know investigated as fully as uh, our party is capable of investigating, I say we move on. I agree. Sounds good. Back on the road, you're now a day a day out. You you think you might reach it if you if you hustle, you might reach it uh, tomorrow midday. 
um, but this this will hopefully be the last full day of traveling for you. But if we take our time, there might be more bacon. It's mm. true. Yum. That's true. There's a, not a lot of gold going around, but maybe the new currency is bacon. You guys are. There's always currency. <laughs> I was rich, and then I had breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I was a king. Um, okay, so you guys are. Let me get the next. Yeah, they actually used to pay people in salts, where we get the word salary. So that that actually could happen. You could you could go be be wealthy one day and poor, depending on your seasoning requirements. Ah, people. Lots okay, of them. so there's some stuff going on here. Oh, that's a dead horse. Oh, that horse is napping. <laughs> is there horse bacon? Mmm, horse bacon. Uh, so not not this isn't exactly um, indicated on the map. So. But it shouldn't be too critical. Uh, the road to Riverhaven is narrow in this area, and trees bend to form a loose canopy above you. No shit. Is it just me, or does this look like the other map flipped upside down? Shut up. <laughs> I swear we passed this rock. <laughs> We're going the wrong way. Come on, it's circles, man. Um, uh, ahead of you, uh, probably a little further than this map suggests, um... You can hear the unmistakable sounds of arrows sailing through the air and metal striking against a shield. Stand back, I'm casting mage armor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's a safe distance. Uh, yeah, okay, you're, you're mage armored. Um, you have stumbled across what appears to be a goblin ambush. You can see uh, the little, their little heads poking out from behind the... Uh, they're, they're in the woods at the moment. In the middle of the road, there's a, a small party of adventure guardy types, and uh, the one uh, the one who seems to be in charge is a young human woman. Uh, she has this fiery red hair and appears to be dressed in a very well crafted plate armor. Um, there are three people with her, sort of similarly similarly acquired, but you know their armor isn't quite as nice or not quite as shiny. Um, Two of the guards, uh, the the two that are furthest away from you, uh, have at least one, uh, if not more, arrows uh, sticking sticking into them, um, and they're they're doing their best to. They're all firing crossbows back into the into the woods. There also appears to be uh, so there, the, as far as classes go, the two in the back look to be guards. Um, there's this woman who appears to be in charge, and there's also somebody who looks. He's kind of dressed like the other guards, but a little more formally. Um, so you, you do think he might be of a higher rank than the uh, the two guards. Um, and they're all kind of using their shields to block arrows as they come in and then taking shots back into the woods whenever they can. Again, it's not reflected on the map, but the, the trees are all a big canopy over the road right now. And uh, from where you are, you see, although it's completely unnoticed by the humans fighting below, there is a single goblin. Uh, slowly climbing out onto a branch that's going on top of the road, and he's carrying what seems to be a very heavy rock. Oh, fun. Um, uh, let me double check my range. Yeah, firebolt is 120 feet, so I can I can hit him. I think from here. May I attempt to shoot a firebolt at the goblin up in the tree? Uh, yes, please do. You want to synchronize this on the count of three? Yeah, let's uh, let's team up on him. Uh, you can ignore the turn order for now because you guys will. This is a surprise round, and then we'll have you guys join the uh, combat already in already in progress. I think I hit him. I think I hit him. <laughs> okay, twenty six and twenty five. Uh, those are both. Yes, they're going to just just barely manage to hit. Um, it's so eight on mine since eight because it was a crit. And if I remember, goblins aren't that hardy, so I think we just knocked this dude out of the tree. Yeah, are you guys? Um, you're, you're both firing at the gentleman in the tree? Yep, same time. Okay. Yep. I'm offended okay. that you used the phrase gentleman for a go. <laughs> um, so, uh, as you guys fire, uh, you draw the attention of the, the guard. Uh, the, there, is a, there is a guard captain uh, named Orman, and there is... We'll just assume that all NPCs have little Hello, My Name Is stickers on them. Yeah, that would be for the best, really. Uh, and the, the, the young woman is Sorelia. Are the nameplates up for them? Yep. Yes. Excellent. Um, 
So as you as you fire in the general direction of the party, uh, you draw the attention of Orman, who uh, glares in your direction, looks very angry that you have a weapon uh, or your, your spell casting. A finger. I, I a somehow, finger. I somehow imagine about this point a flaming goblin falls down in front of them. Let me get to it. Uh, you see, he's, he's rather uh, cross that you you seem to be flinging uh, your nonsense in their direction. Uh, and he raises his crossbow and points it right at Nob, because Venorin thought to have to hang around. Uh, just as he's about to fire, you see him get yanked backwards um, by the young. So he's going to step up and yank. She's going to yank him backwards. Um, and just as he does, the, the goblin falls headfirst into the ground in front of Orman. Uh, followed quickly by a heavy stone which lands on the uh, the goblin, who's so dead that the, the stone doesn't even matter, <laughs> but it's just insult to injury. Um, Sorelia's going... Who, who, let's see. Well, you both you both made the shot together, so Sorelia's just going to look in the general direction of the party, give you kind of a thankful nod, uh, before immediately lifting her crossbow and firing it into the woods at... Uh, a goblin that you can't see from where you are. Uh, but you do hear an audible growl of pain uh, come from the, the edge of the woods. Let's get some uh, initiative rolls from everyone, please. I can't click on scats. I'm just going to do a refresh. Okay. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> At Wait, least it's halfling. consistent. <laughs> hey, hey, halfling, you get to re-roll ones. Oh, right. That's better. And then you guys spot some enemies. All right, whole mess of goblins are attacking. Oh, stop spreading out! It's really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so Nob's going to cast Hex on Goblin One, and then attempt to hit it with an Eldritch Blast. Uh, nine is not going to manage to hit. Okay. I'm going to between between turns. I'm, you, you're probably going to see some names popping up. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Goblin 1 is going oh, to... Oh, sorry. Movement 1, 2, 3. Oh, yes. Do you guys have Goblin 1 through 4 across the top? Yes. Yep. Excellent. Okay. So, Goblin 1 is going to uh, not appreciate your Eldritch Blast and uh, fire back with its short bow. And miss. Uh, Goblin 2 is going to fire at Orman uh, with its... Oop, nope, that was Orman's attack. Ignore that. Goblin 2 attacks... Oh, of course, 20. And is going to do 3 damage to him. Goblin 3 is going to fire at Sorelia. And, cr of course. Uh, crit, so that is 4 plus a d6. I hope that character you named wasn't important. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Goblin 4 is going to fire at the guard. And the guard, that's going to... No, that's going to hit. Did the nice thing you write your own adventures is you can always stuff a journal on their person that explains everything. Uh -huh. Okay, we got another couple goblins here. One of them is going to take a shot at Nob. And miss. One of them going to take a shot at Orman. And miss. One of them is going to take a shot at Sorelia. And miss. One of them is going to take a shot at the guard. Miss. One of them's gonna take a shot at the other guard. Miss. Pure goblin. So all the good goblins are on the north side. That's because that's why they have names like <laughs> goblin, <laughs> yeah. goblin Three. Uh, so the fact that I'm now naming the other ones just means you guys are in so much trouble. So now the ones on the north are like, yeah, north side goblins represent. Oh, it probably and... won't matter. For the record, I was supposed to choose an ability for that hex too. So dexterity. Did they have to do any kind of? Uh, if they so goblin one has disadvantage on dex saves while the hex does. Ah. Okay. Alright. Well, since I have a hand crossbow and that's really shitty and I didn't say I loaded it earlier. Uh, oh, you, no, you, you can start loaded. Okay. Well, I, I assume when shit started, while they were firing on the one in the tree, I'm just going to assume you were preparing for shit to go down. And generally D&D &D games don't force people to be realistic. Like, for instance, if you're a bow person, you just assume it's strung up all the time. Even though you would not actually do that with a bow. Yeah, that's hard. I've never played any game where you're like, all right, well, it's your turn. Time to string your bow up. Yeah, but it, that takes a second if you do it, right? Uh, <laughs> if you have a bow stringer and you've modified your bow to do that, but people loot magic bows. 
Oh no, it's not a crossbow, it's a short bow. Awesome. So I'm gonna attack Goblin 1. And a 7 misses, doesn't it? 7 misses. Are you sure about that? Yep. Uh, Sorelia is gonna fire at Goblin 8 with her crossbow. And miss. Uh, Scats. Oh, I'm sorry. She really gets two attacks. Well then. She missed both. Scats. Okay, I'm going to uh, go into a rage because that seems like a good thing to do right now. Mm hmm. Um, that means I get plus two to every damage roll. I'm resistant to bludgeoning, per piercing, and slashing damage. Which is everything they can deal you. Yep. Okay, it's a bonus action, so that's nice. And isn't there something like if you kill somebody, you can transfer to the next person or something? Uh, not at first level. Okay. I do think you have to attack somebody every turn, otherwise you lose your rage. I have to be, I have to attack someone or be attacked. Okay. So I'm just, I'll, I'm going to give you the option here because you're very far out of the fight. You don't really have enough movement to get into the fight. So you... Oh, unless you're going to go ranged. You can go ranged. Mm -hmm. I can move 35 feet and then throw stuff. Is your movement 35? Yeah. As a half uh, I think that's what I read. Did you get a bonus for something? Because it should have only been 30. Half are usually 25. It's movement a half on half is, uh, 25. Oh, okay. Well, let me move back 10 feet. I did not jump that far. I'm sure Barbara are... gets some kind of bonus pretty early, though. Yeah, it, uh, it also wouldn't have surprised me if raging gave you a speed boost. But... Okay, I'm gonna hold off on the rage then, because otherwise I'm not gonna make it anywhere, and I'm just gonna do a double movement then. Okay, that's that's kind of what I was at, what I was giving me the out for. There we go. Uh, Orman is going to fire his crossbow at Goblin Number Two. Hey, they finally hit something. Uh, for seven, which is actually going to be enough to kill Goblin 2. Uh, Venorin. Oh, yeah, well with this bit. Uh, Firebolt on uh, Goblin 9. Ew. Crit miss. Please roll a d100. Oh! <laughs> oh, fuck. Yes. And I'm right next to him. Somebody's within 10 feet. Oh, it's confusion. We all know what that does. Oh, because that was what we rolled. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> all right. So, um, uh, for, for anyone who wasn't here during the practice round and for anyone who doesn't know what this does, uh, wild magic means basically something not of Venoran's choosing, choosing is now happening. An uncontrolled burst. I would just like to point out, sixty percent of the time, that's something good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, what's going to happen this time is you cast confusion on anyone within ten feet, which is Lyle and me uh, and himself and yourself. So both of you first are going to do wisdom saving throws. Okay. And Venorn, what is your spell save? DC? Oh, this is not my proficiency either. Uh, save DC is thirteen. Okay. So. Oh, 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 I got a four. I failed. I failed hard. <laughs> so we'll discuss what that means on your turn um, momentarily. Uh, first, Nob. Uh, being not confused, but aware of the dangers. <laughs> Let's just take care of the movement portion first. Mm -hmm. In case their confusion and forces. Away from me. <laughs> like about uh, 20 feet away from me. And an Eldritch Blast at Goblin 1. Nope. Nine is going to miss. Goblin 1's going to return fire. And miss. Uh, Goblin 2 is dead. Goblin 3 is going to fire at Orman. And miss. Goblin 4 is going to fire at the guard. And hit. Uh, and th ooh, 3. Okay, so that guard is... Uh, that guard is now... Down. Uh, these NPCs are going to be doing saving throws. Um... So, it's a fun fact. Uh, Goblin 5 is going to attack uh, the other guard and hit for 7. The guard is not looking so good. Uh, Goblin 6 is going to fire at that same guard. Unbelievable. So that guard is down. 
Uh, Goblin 7 is gonna fire at Sorelia. And miss. Goblin 8 is gonna fire at Sorelia. And miss. Goblin 9 is gonna fire at Scats. Yeah! Oh, and darn it. Yes. 15 hits. Yes. 4 damage to Scats. That is the end of the Goblin Murder phase. Uh, Guard 1 gets to make a death saving throw, and I'm gonna just make up they have a plus one con. Fail! Uh, the other guard, same, same deal. 16 will be a pass. Uh, Lyle. Oh, Lyle! Um, oh, God damn it! Could you do me a favor? <laughs> could you roll a d8? A d8? No, sorry, sorry, d10. sorry, a d d10. Yeah. Five. Five is okay. The creature does not move or take actions this turn. Fuck you. Make a whiz throw! Yeah, and you can make a wisdom saving throw uh, to see if it ends the effect. It's all your fault. It's not me. <laughs> crit. Okay, you, cr you crit your saving throw. Nice! Uh, so, you are no longer confused. I mean, you're, you're no longer more confused <laughs> than you were before. You're, you're no Fair. longer in-game confused. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Alright, Sorelia is going to point her crossbow and fire at Goblin 8. Miss. We're just going to take a second shot at him and miss even more. Uh, scats. Okay, this is where I'm going to go into a rage. Alright, let's uh, let's give you some some bloodlust here. Side note, I might punch Venorin after this is done. That She's might so cause angry. a wild surge. <laughs> I, I oh, could have yeah. sworn I explained this particular problem I have. <laughs> uh, Alright, scats. Okay. Good. Halberd attack on goblin number 9. 11 is not going to hit. Uh, uh, isn't wait. it 16? I was going to say, you get advantage with uh, while well, you're in a rage, right? Um, I'll just... Uh, I don't think so, but... Is that a point of rage? Yeah, as multiple yeah, I, people I'm think pretty sure do. it was strength checks and strength based attacks. I thought. Um. Strength checks and strength saving throws. Oh wait, no, never mind. Yes, I do. When I make a melee weapon attack with strength. Okay, so then it is a sixteen, and that hits. That's a plus two. Yeah, so it's beyond. It's, it, the 8 alone was enough to kill. Okay, well, it was a 10. Rawr. Uh, So, Orman is going to fire his crossbow at goblin number 3. And miss. Uh, Venorin. Uh, could you kindly roll it? Oh, there it is. 7? Why would you roll a 7? 7 means the creature uses its action to make a melee attack against a randomly determined creature within its reach. If there's no creature within its reach, the creature does nothing on this turn. What is the range on your... Oh, melee attack. Uh, oh, so that's gonna be Lyle. So I'm good. So that's... Hmm? Oh, I... Yeah, see, Lyle's not in range, but... You could move. But I didn't. <laughs> yeah, but... The creature uses its action to make a melee attack. No, that's true. It doesn't then say... Then it's reach. Yeah. It doesn't say move. It says action, so... And you're no longer confused. Woohoo! Uh, no. Nah. We got out of that pretty well scaped. I'm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> I mean, I think you're going to have some issues with dealing with Lyle. But there will be punching. Yeah. Uh, so it's keep track towards the dying people. Sort of. And try to maybe hit Goblin 1 with Eldritch He's missing. He's pretty, like, you know, invulnerable. Oh, never mind. 24 will hit. And there's another 1d6 on that. Oh, good. From Hex. Oh, yay. Hey, but it's necrotic. That doesn't matter. Goblin 1's gonna fire back at you. Hit. 21. Son of a bitch. 7. That can only... Ah, god damn it! Uh, Goblin 3 is going to also fire at you. Uh, Goblin 4. Sorry, you're the closest thing that's moving. Yeah, it was like 21. And doesn't matter how much Seven. it is. 7. down to 0. Oh, no, it would matter how much it is. Two more points and you would have been dead. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. To be fair, it's a d6 plus 2, so actually that was impossible for him to uh, kill you already. But uh, not <laughs> not as impossible as you'd normally <laughs> like. Um, 
You say impossible as if a crit weren't possible. Level 5 will step up a bit and fire at Swalia. And hit her. Level 7. Uh, goblin 9. Nope, nope. What is it? That was a goblin 5. Oh shit, there's so many more goblins. Uh, attack on Swalia. Miss. Goblin 7 will attack Ormond. And miss. And Goblin 8 will attack Ormond. And miss. Goblin murder phase over. Guard saving throws. Uh, the first goblin makes his second miss. A second uh, death save failure. Uh, the bottom guard makes his second pass. One of these people wants to live. Lyle! Alright, well, hopefully getting out of the range of the dumbass in my party. <laughs> A and dumbass. I'll shoot the bow a at uh, Goblin 1. Well, next right. turn, I'm going to shoot a firebolt at Lyle, and I'm going to pretend I'm still confused. <laughs> <laughs> so much pain. 24, 24 is going to hit. hit. That'll hit the crap out of him. 8 damage. That is beyond enough to uh, to kill Goblin 1. So you guys have uh, 4 goblins to the south of the road, and 2 more goblins to the north, and that brings us to Sorelia, who will use her crossbow to fire at Goblin 5. And miss. And then at Goblin 5 again. And same rolls. 10. Scats. I crash Goblin 8. <laughs> Crit. <Ooh. laughs> Rage. Plus so that's going to be 11 plus 2, 13. That's. Yeah, he has 7 hit points total. So he is. Seven, uh, Goblin 8 is dead. Uh, Orman is going to fire his crossbow at Goblin 3. And hit. And do seven damage, which will take down a goblin. The Norn. Uh, I'm oh. shooting a firebolt at goblin four. Twenty will hit. Six. But he has seven hit points. All right. So he's still up. Uh, Nob. First dance saving throw. Yay. Pass. If he had had a turn, the guard who's about to die wouldn't have died. But all right. Uh, maintenance here. Goblin 1 is gone. Goblin 3 is gone. Goblin 4 is going to fire at uh, Orman. And hit Orman for 3. Uh, Goblin 5 will fire at Sorelia. And miss. That's two crit misses from the goblins. Uh, Goblin 6 will fire at Orman. 17 will hit Orman. 6 from Orman. And Goblin 7 will fire. Will actually step up and fire at Scats. 17. For 4. What kind of what kind of damage is he hitting me with? Uh piercing, so you should be resistant, so you're gonna take two. Burr. And you're gonna scare the shit out of everyone else when you just like wave off an arrow to the chest. It's hilarious right. too because I'm not wearing any armor. <laughs> uh, the top go the top guard, the last chance for him to save his own life, and he fails. <laughs> Steve is dead. Mm -hmm. uh, the bottom guard, Red. He wants to live. He just wants to live so badly. Um, he Red. he is now uh, he's now down but stable. Uh, Lyle. Alright, well, we're gonna do this again. Run forward, or move forward. I'm gonna shoot number 7. 20's gonna hit. Oh yeah. 8 damage. That will be enough to kill Goblin 7. Uh, Sorelia is going to fire at Goblin 5. Actually, Sorelia's gonna do something else. Um, uh, where is this? Uh, you guys remember uh, Xena Warrior Princess's circular blade? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's called the Chakram. Mm -hmm. uh, she has something resembling uh, that uh, strapped to her leg. Um, and she's going to uh, pull that out, and you notice on it there are three colored gemstones. Uh, and she taps the blue one uh, before... Hurling it towards uh, Goblin 5. And 
it is going to do half damage because of that. Uh, goblin number five is going to take four damage. Uh, it then swoops through the air and hits Goblin 6. Fun. Uh, which it actually hits. So Goblin 6 is going to take 5 points of damage. And then it's going to return to Sorelia's hand. And scats. Okay. Goblin 6. Gotcha! <laughs> You run really up to Goblin clearly 6. Really enunciate that. <laughs> and uh, 19 is... Yeah, 19 will hit Goblin 6. Uh, and you cleave him in two. Uh, Ormin is going to take a shot at Goblin 4. His crossbow and miss. Venorin. Uh, I only see two left. One of which is dangling on by one hit point. Um, I think you guys can take out 5. I'm going to go ahead and take out 4. Hopefully. 22 will hit Goblin 4. That is, 8 fire damage is beyond enough to, to completely murder Goblin 4. Uh, no, saving throw. Bam! No. Uh, one failure. And, okay, so Goblin 4 is dead. Goblin 8 is dead. Goblin 9 is dead. Goblin 7 is dead. Goblin 6 is dead. Goblin 5 is alive. He's the only one left. He's gonna take... One last shot yet, uh, Scats. The most courageous <sighs> goblin. Seven, you're gonna take three hit points because of your rage. Yay! But still, ow! <laughs> but yay! But, 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 ow. <laughs> um, goblin, the guard is, is out, the other guard is stable, so he will be, he will be just there. Uh, Lyle. Alright, I'm gonna move up there. I'm going to fire a short bow one last time at Goblin 5, is it? Mm-hmm. Seven's going to Seven miss. Seven will miss. God damn it. Yeah. Uh, Sorelia will fire her crossbow at Goblin 5. 21 will hit. Ten points is enough to cause a goblin to explode into small bits. Goblin bits. Still less depressing than bacon bits. Indeed. What are they? They're like soy protein and... and They're vegan. Uh, so, with the fight appearing to be over, Orman is going to run up and he's going to stabilize uh, Nob. Yay! Uh, so Sorelia, Sorelia is going to run over and check. Uh, spend a moment checking on um, her guard. I'm going to recover my arrows. Yeah, recover arrows, uh, nobody took job. I'm going to apologize to Lyle and explain once again it's a medical condition. Punch. <laughs> Punch. Let's uh, get these awful, awful death markers off you. Um, uh, I'm going to say Orman's a trained healer, Nob, so you're actually going to go back up to one hit point. Yay! Uh, as will the, the guard. And Okay, so yeah, they spent a minute or two attending to uh, their wounded as well as yours. Um... Sorelia seems to be particularly compassionate uh, to her guard, uh, making sure he knows that everything will be okay, that his wounds aren't serious. Um, Orman has a decent size uh, goblin arrow sticking out of his shoulder um, that, you know, is, is bound with uh, bindings. Uh, does it look uh, like the arrow we pulled from the boar? Uh, not in particular. I mean, it could be. It's a goblin arrow. The the one in the boar kind of looked like goblin arrows, but it could have been shitty human work. work. Yeah, you don't you don't see a direct connection. It's not like oh, these are the telltale. They're, they're very nondescript arrows. Um, so uh, Sorley has a, a, a brief discussion in private with Orman, and and she seems to be saying something about you folk, um, and whatever she's discussing with him, um, uh, Orman isn't. Uh, thrilled about. Um, uh, after a few minutes of them exchanging words, uh, she walks over to the party. Orman's back a little bit, like back here or so, uh, simply looking displeased. Um, and she says, uh, I, I must thank you for your help today. I'm not certain we would have survived if you hadn't arrived when you did. Uh, my guard captain is most likely scowling behind me because I've asked him to return with the wounded men to Riverhaven. 
Uh, we came into these woods to secure a construction site that was abandoned a few days ago by builders constructing a watchtower uh, in the hopes that the, the watchtower's completion would help make these roads safer for travelers such as yourselves. Um, I'm, I'm already in your debt and you certainly owe me nothing more, but I would ask that you accompany me the few miles north and help me complete my mission. Uh, we would gladly do that, but uh, we we um, would would need some sort of recompense to uh, accommodate us for our time. Um, uh, but we're happy to help. If uh, if money is what you seek, uh, we can certainly we can certainly pay you for your services. Uh, would would ten gold cover your services? What kind of whore do you take me? I mean, yes, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but no touching. No, no, kiss, eye no kissing at that price. <laughs> Ten dollars to watch me touch my toes. <laughs> so she, um, so she says, well, "Of course, um, <laughs> es- <laughs> es- escort me, uh, escort me to the the site of the watchtower. Help me, help me clear out whatever whatever uh, was was harassing the uh, the builders." And I've I've brought a flag to fly on top of the watchtower. Uh, once once that's done, we can th- then your your services to me will be fulfilled. One quick question about provisions: You don't happen to have like healing potions or an, on you, do you? Um, and she yeah, so <laughs> she looks no healer at in our party is why I ask. Um, and she says, uh, yes, we we brought a few with us. Um, and she she goes into uh, one of the horses uh, saddlebags. Um, and she she pulls out two and she says I'm, I'm sorry this is all we, we brought with us but they're yours I would really appreciate a healing potion <laughs> <laughs> we'll just go ahead and say she gives them to Nob uh, she also tells you that if you'd um, if you'd she it's very important to her that this mission be completed by the end of today but we, there is time to take to take, she doesn't say a short rest, but well, maybe she does. She says well, we can take a short rest to compose ourselves uh, before we set out. A brief yeah. respite, perhaps. <laughs> a brief respite. Compose ourselves. The only one who needs to be composed is the goddamn wizard. Sorcerer. Same bloody difference. <laughs> Actually, no, all of your complaints you about him are specifically because he's not a wizard. Yeah, if I were a wizard, <laughs> we wouldn't have a problem. <laughs> I'm a sorcerer. I have a medical condition. <laughs> it's like Tourette's but with magic you know what that else it is good. not reassuring when you're standing next to it okay I'm gonna use a hit die too I don't need no stinking heals nice well I desperately need one of those whoa, 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 whoa. how do you have a d12 hit die because I'm a barbarian oh nice sorry did not know that dipshit I'm um, Shut up, I'm learning. That's the adjustment for them not wearing armor? Oh, that's fair. That's the adjustment for the rage costing the Macy. Alright, so was that... That was one... That was one of the healing potions. Alright, so you guys still as a party have one healing potion, and we'll just say Nob has it for now, since you don't really have a dedicated healer to uh, to give it to. Although maybe somebody who doesn't charge into the thick of melee might be a better choice of who carries that. You know, one of you squishy... Arrow guys, something. In my defense, we've had two combats, one of which I did charge in. <laughs> Old habits, die hard. Valoran, you should hang on to that potion. Hey, right, I'll hang on to it. Um, so, you guys, you all set out north. Uh, there's, a, there's basically a small trail that leads just a couple miles into the woods uh, where they plan to build this, this watchtower. Uh, so after traveling a little ways, uh, nothing, nothing of particular note happens, uh, and then eventually you come to a clearing. Okay, uh, the dense forest begins to thin into a clearing as you come across a partially built stone watchtower at the end of a new trail. Uh, a river to the east of you, and the watchtower to the north, centered in the clearing, with more forest beyond. The watchtower looks about half-built, stone blocks covering the lower half of wooden scaffolding, 
which rises easily 80 feet into the air. Piles of wood and stone are neatly arranged around the watchtower waiting to be assembled. Resting on nearly every surface, the trees, the ground, the half-finished watchtower, the piles of unused building supplies, are black ravens, either unaware or undisturbed by your presence so far. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. <laughs> Nevermore. Um, so... The uh, Sorelia at this point says um, s- some of the builders uh, spoke of of winged beasts driving them off. I would normally not think builders could be scared off by birds, but there are so many of them. Have you seen the magical projection by the uh, famed wizard Alfred Hitchcock? <laughs> oh, hey, uh, we don't get... have a wizard. We have a sorcerer, apparently. Oh, th- Apparently. It's well magic, he's it's, invisible. It's, it it's actually it's actually on the wild magic table that I can make myself invisible on accident. Yeah. It's great. Can you do it without inflicting damage on the rest of the fucking party? You should I, take press the digitation I, I, so you have an excuse I can to use also magic make all the, the entire time. Party invisible on accident. Not reassuring. <laughs> um okay, so Sorelia is anxious to uh to move to move closer um she she says uh, i think if we're quiet i'm sure they won't they won't bother us um and she she lays her her pack like all the all the equipment she was carrying aside from her weapons and so forth she kind of lays to the side of the road uh aside from a, a leather case uh that you assume contains the she said she had a flag to fly over the watchtower uh you assume that's what this contains Quick, quick question uh, before we get too much closer. Um, do we think it's a good idea or a bad idea to shoot fireballs at things that are flying? Uh, bad. It depends on what the thing that's flying is. If it's me, it's a bad idea. Well, I think right, it sounds but, like a good idea. Well, I'm just concerned if the uh, swarm of ravens attack, if shooting fireballs at them is considered by the party to be uh, a, a wise choice, or if turning them into f- Flaming missiles would be bad. Who here hasn't been hit by a few flaming ravens? Well, when you put it that way. I'm glad that this is our line that we're using to make decisions. <laughs> All right. Hey, I just figured I'd ask before we got too much closer. Uh, but do more. Stuff. Do ensure you're ten feet away or, or further. Yeah. <laughs> with your with your condition. Uh, so we should probably approach and. Um, uh, uh, I, I anticipate that we are going to get swarmed by swarms. Should should we try and be stealthy, maybe? Well, I think stealth is one option, um, but ravens, like, really are food-motivated. Maybe we can lure them away by giving them something. We have that grain! We should just... It's like birds eat. Grab the grain. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah! Can anybody sing the uh, Mary Poppins Feed the Birds song while we scatter this around? Does anyone so what, have to should... You should use your spectral hand and put it away from all of us so we don't have to go anywhere near the birds. Well, I was oh, going to yeah. say, maybe we should be careful and, assuming the barbarian isn't the smartest of us, take the grain away from the barbarian before they <laughs> hit the birds <laughs> with it. So as the barbarian munches on the last <laughs> handful of grain. Yeah, I was actually going to have the, uh, the, the road do it, but using mage hand is, I think is actually a very good idea. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take... Um, you, a little you bit take of grain. 10 pounds of grain, I'll take 10 pounds of grain. Yeah, we'll keep them 30 pounds away from us, and we'll sneak up. Uh, you want to go up the right side and put them over by the beach? Yeah. Okay, right, let's see if this works. Oh my god, so we may have found a non-violent solution. Why don't you ping for me where you're trying to put it? Boy, if well, I was thinking, like, there it is. Alright, there are some trees between there and there. Between A and B. Yeah, that works. Uh, why don't you give me a... I'll have to stick with you so we can keep mage hands around the same area. Give me a spread it's a, grain roll. It's a third um, foot range. <laughs> so. Let's, let's okay, make this yeah. an animal handling roll, but I'll give you advantage. <laughs> and and if, frankly, if, a boost. If, if this, this, roll, if this roll fails, can I go persuade the birds? Because I have very high charisma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I likewise would prefer a charisma-based animal trickery. You know what? I'm going to say... Who the hell is animal handling? Animal <laughs> handling, but we'll add your proficiency. Yeah, you know what? Just give me an animal handling roll. If, if you don't... <laughs> <it's> <laughs> 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 
He yes! said you have advantage. <laughs> the double yeah. crystal. So you did <laughs> <Double> both. <fail. laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. So, for anyone listening, <laughs> that was a that was a crit miss on both. Uh, With a two and a nine for eight. Venoran and Nub. Do I need With a two and a three I without the advantage? Now? <laughs> <laughs> um. Yes. I'll tell you what. Do a D one hundred, and if whatever happens doesn't logically draw too much attention to you, uh, then maybe your plan will still work. Fifty four. Fifty four means. You are immune to being intoxicated by alcohol for the next 5d6 days. Oh, God. Oh, my condolences. So why don't you give me a 5... Why don't you roll 5d6? <laughs> 23 days. So you got two two, de- two 10 days plus a, uh, plus a bit uh, guys, where you can... Remember this if we need to get into a drinking contest with it. I was going to say. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh... You failed to uh, persuade the birds onto the beach, but you didn't. You didn't like induce them into attack you. Yay! I mean, Ish. something. Is there any of the horse meat? Did anyone pick up any of the horse meat? Oh, that horse bacon. We should have, but we didn't. No. I mean, at a certain point, you guys have tried this strategy and you failed. Well, clearly the, the ravens aren't hungry, so we should be fine just walking right through. That's fair. Um, I, I would point out we offered them grain, and we haven't offered them meat, and we're made of meat. True, but barley actually has a very high protein content, and most very of the true. enzymes necessary to break down the complex sugars, which ravens are, are very well versed in, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. That's Is that a year two, or is that a year three class for them? I can't remember. It's been so long well, since they, I went they, to ravens. They pretty school. much all go through nutritional uh, 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 sciences, so... Yeah, but isn't their nutritional science if it fits, eat it? Basically, yeah. <laughs> I thought that that is nutritional science, isn't it? Well, no, we have the knife and fork to make it fit. Actually, interestingly enough, ravens are have been shown to know how to use tools and can also cut things up and make it bite-sized. Terrifying, but cool. Yeah, they're dinosaurs that know how to use tools. That's extremely terrifying. I try not to piss off ravens as a rule, so... So, uh, Sorelia appears to be working her way through the ravens, um, very quietly, very slowly, giving them as much of a berth as she can. I actually had her roll a animal handling check. Oh, good. She got one. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to hold back until, um, I see how the party does through the ravens, just in case I need to start shooting fireballs at ravens or, or, or other things. Um, okay, so she, that's for, for like one turn, I guess. Not that we're really turn based right now, but. Maybe the rogue should go next? Who's and sneaky? sneak my way. Quiet. Alright. Let's see, there's woods here, woods there. I'll sneak up through these woods on this side here. And... You're far enough away, you don't really have to do any kind of roll for that. Oh, okay. Not... So I'll accept that I don't have to roll. I mean, you can try to stealth if you want, but the ra- whatever attention the ravens are paying to you is uh, mostly uh, on people they can see. Okay, so I get there, and it took a double move. So I can't inspect or investigate or anything else. I mean, oh, right, yeah. I mean, we're not really turn-based right now. Okay, um, can I take a look around? Yeah, yeah. Is there anything in particular you're looking at? Um... Head counts? I don't know what's in these big piles of crap. Uh, the piles ahead of you are uh, some stones, some lumber. They're just sort of general construction materials. There's also a broken, tipped-over cart. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. Do they make any other flavor in this area of the world? <laughs> okay, so you, you do make out a couple other things. Um, you see some footprints that seem to be running towards the, uh, the path that you came up on. And uh, there are some, a lot of deep grooves in cart-sized uh, grooves in the, in some of the, the dirt and the mud and so forth. So in theory, um, somewhere in this part of the world, there is a working cart. I, I did have a question regarding the um, thing directly to the east of Lyle. It looks like either caviar or bird guano. You know, it came up when I when I typed in piles of. So it is indeed a pile of something. Uh, oh, lovely. It, it, I don't know what it is. It's construction material. It is generic construction material. 
it is a pile of debris. They're self-sealing stem bolts. Oh, ah. man. DS9 for life. Uh, all right, so so Lyle has done something. Sorelli has decided to put herself in the midst of it. Nob was part of the plan. Nob and, and Venoran were part of the distraction plan that didn't pan out. Uh, Scats, what are you up to? I um, am whistling at the swarm of ravens over here. I had pet birds as a kid, trying to just, you know, make them happy. Or, or you could go that way with it. Okay. Uh, could you pl- kindly do an animal handling roll? Did your character what? actually have birds? I know you have birds. Yeah. Are you making that part of your character's backstory? Yes. Then that will be with advantage. That'll be a 19. Um, so, the birds are not... Um, I'm, you know, they, they seem to not be paying you any mind. Are they right. That means I guess I can move up here then. Next to... Well, behind Sorelia. I'm not standing in front of her. She can fight her own battles. Um, okay, so everyone's kind of done something. Um, at this point, Sorelia is going to want to move a little further up. And trigger a trap. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Sorelia walks up. She tries to take a step, and when she does, uh, there's just this, like... The, the noise in the area goes from nothing more than the, the river, the, the small river to the east. That is not the River Haven River. That's just more of a creek. Um, aside, that was the only real noise in the area. Well, now there's the fluttering and, and just the, the... All these birds take to the air around you all at once. You guys heard of a helicopter? Because that's kind of what it sounds like. <laughs> uh, all right, initiative rolls from everybody. Ooh, reroll. Nicely done, everyone. 12, 19, 18, 16, 5. <gasps> I got a 20. I, I, I said 12, I meant 20. Um, okay, so, Lyle, you are first. You see all these ravens take to the air around your your friends and compatriots. There's nothing to steal immediately where you are, so you might as well help. There is a pile of, of raven guano. Tie nitrates. It makes a great brick adhesive. All right, you run out of. Cr- they mortar the stones with. If it, it's one half of really crappy explosive. Right. One, two, three, four. And 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 he does mean you. Explosive. You can't really go inside the watchtower. It's okay. It's also outside my moving range. Oh, free. Okay. Let me. In fact, let me. I didn't really put it on here, but let me freehand a. Uh, Doorway onto the front of the watchtower. Okay. So and, and it's unfinished, so but as, there's as a doorway. Finished. Well, there's an entrance that where the stone isn't. Okay. All right. Well, anyways, so I will take a shot at Swarm of Ravens Four, since there's really not a whole lot of other options. Oh, crit, motherfucker! That's not a bad way to start. For eight damage. And do I get my sneak attack on this? I don't know. I'm new with that. Uh, no. Okay. Because you don't have, uh, you're not hidden from them, and, uh, you don't have an ally near them. But I'm my own ally. <laughs> That's true. That's part of the problem. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, let's start with hexing this swarm of ravens, because they're nearby and scary. And maybe hitting them with an Eldritch Blast? I don't know. I don't know if I've actually done this game. Once. The goblin. Crit! Woo-hoo. You guys are not liking the- <laughs> uh, Let's see, force damage. All right. Only one so, bird we like, and that's chicken. Uh, Venoran. All right. Uh, since I'm still a, a bit concerned about the prospect of flaming missiles, I, I'm going to switch up my uh, my favorite attack. Be careful. Ten feet. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. going to switch up to, uh, to acid splash. Um, Ten foot rule. Ten feet. <laughs> Hold on. No, I take that back. I'm going to switch up to Ray of Frost. We should make a ten foot hoop to go around him. <laughs> you understand it was just that one thing that you, was ten feet, right? You can move before you cast, though. You, 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 you yeah. The, ten the, feet. The, and makes a really good point. Ten feet is not really saving you guys from much of anything. 
That was if he rolls a 53 or a 54 on his die. He just happened to do that during the practice round and during the first time we did it. Uh, yeah, but now you're metagaming. And, and as yeah. an evidence-based player... I'm the DM, I'm allowed to. <laughs> it is clear, based on the evidence, that 10 feet is a very important radius. <laughs> uh, I, I, I have was in my attack rolls. 14, does that hit a radius? A 14 hits a swarm of ravens. Yes. So, 6. You couldn't crit? Everyone else crit. Oh, also, their speed is reduced by 10 feet until my next turn, if that matters. Way to not be a team player without critting. Sorry, I crit. Okay, so they can only fly 40 feet. Uh, scats? Can I hit them with a halberd? Does that work? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're swinging into, like, a, a, sw- a swarm. You kind of just swing at it, and then you hope you hit something. Uh, you, however, didn't. Uh, not with a 10. Treat it like a giant fly swatter, okay? Pretend you're a swarm swordfish. Of ravens. Uh, <laughs> one of the swarms of ravens is going to uh, peck at Lyle. Of course. Crit miss. Suck it. And one of them is going to okay. Swarm of ravens six is going to descend upon Sorelli. I'm I'm not gonna. Technically, they can occupy the same space as you. I will not do that unless it becomes like important. Okay, so Swarm of Raven 6 is going to peck at Sorelia. And miss. Swarm of Ravens number 5 is going to... 5, 10, 15 is also going to attack Sorelia. And miss. Swarm of Raven 7 is going to attack Sorelia. And miss. Swarm of Ravens 1 is going to attack Sorelia. And miss. Swarm of Ravens 2 is going to attack Scats. Ha 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 ha. Critical miss. And Swarm of Ravens number three is going to attack now. 17 wounds. Alright. Ravens, not that uh, not that difficult. Or not that dangerous anyways. Uh, Lyle. Alright. Um, well, now that they're right next to me, I will drop the short bow, draw my rapier, and pierce them? Yeah, you can stab at a swarm. Hope you hit something. I got a nineteen, so I'm you're, you're sure going I hit right. something. Just come yeah, you take a you take a slice out of something. You you, you kill yourself. Oh, make Ooh, eleven damage. Yeah. All right. You seem to have upset the swarm, but you've also taken a chunk out of something. You're not really sure what it's all swarmy, but uh, no. Stabby time with a spear. Twenty will hit. Four min damage. Plus the 1d6 of necrotic damage. Okay, that's and good to know. And dex again for the hex. For Apparently okay. nobody casts save base spells, but... Uh, Venorn. Uh, I'm going to shoot at the purple one again. Swarm of Ravens 3. Okay. Now you're going to take a step to the side first, maybe, so you don't hit... Uh, knob doesn't give them cover. Ten feet! Ten feet! Wrong side. I'm going to get really close to everyone in my party. Bad touch. Hug. 22 will definitely hit the ravens for 8 cold damage that will uh that particular swarm is dead uh scats okay I'm gonna try and hit this swarm again 18 will hit for 5 uh as you're swinging you you notice that the swarm doesn't seem as affected by your weapons as you might have (sighs) hoped all right, Raven murder phase. Beak attack on Lyle. 18, oh, that'll hit. That hits. 10. Oh, I'm down. Oh! Wow. <laughs> I are fragile. Okay. Um, Raven number 6 will attack Sorelia and hit Sorelia and do 8. Excellent. Yes, my Raven friends. Stand close to each other. <laughs> uh, Raven number 5 will attack her hit for two swarm of ravens number seven will attack Sorelia. I didn't even pick their pockets and they got all upset and miss. raven number one will attack Sorelia and uh, miss and swarm of ravens number two will attack scats and 22 will hit for five okay Lyle death save that's a fail. Alright, one fail with a seven. Nob. 
Oh, two, three, four, five. Uh, Nob will attempt. He'll move the hex onto this group of ravens. Sure. And then try to stabby stabby. That is raven group number two. 17 will hit. Okay. Seven piercing. Plus the 1d6 of necrotic. And then. Yeah, didn't matter. An additional ne one necrotic. Uh, Venorin. Now it's time for acid splat. So I'm going to. Let's see, that's 60 feet so I can get this. Uh, the. Uh, Ravens 5 and I think Raven 7 are standing side by side up there. Uh, there. There's also Raven 1 standing in front of them. I don't know if that... I'll matters. do Raven 1 and Raven 5. So... Okay. Bubble of Acid. Yep, two targets. They need to do a dex save or take 1d6 acid. Okay. Uh, 26? That's, that's not right. There's that's something right. wrong in there. Yeah, we decided before your spell save was 13, so for whatever reason, it's doubled. Yep, yeah, it says save DC, sorcerer DC. I don't know where I got 26 from, but that's not right. Yeah, it's 13. Okay. Uh, did you fill in the save DC on the first page? Yep. Oh, well, whatever. We, we know it's 13, so Raven group number one is going to pass. Raven group number of two is going to pass. Uh, oh, no damage on it. I was, I was expecting half damage on a save. Uh, scats. Okay, well, since the whole slashing damage didn't seem to be working, I'm going to try bludgeoning with my great club. 23 will hit. Hey. Uh, Raven murder phase. Swarm of ravens number four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. One of these is going to attack Knob. And miss with a nine. Raven group number six is going to attack. He's going to come down and attack Scouts. Oh, and crit. I'm so sorry for this. Uh, oh, poop, I'm down. Exactly. Ooh. I was worried you might die, so... So 11 damage to take you to zero hit points is, is in a small way okay with me. Uh, Raven group number 5 will attack Sorelia and miss. Raven group number 7 will attack Sorelia and hit with a 20. She'll take an additional 7. She's not looking so good. Uh, Raven group number 1 will attack Sorelia and miss. Raven group number 2 will attack Nob and miss. Uh, Lyle, death save. Alright. Shit. That's a 9, which is another fail. Uh, no. Well, Scats just went down, but Lyle is one turn away from dying. It's okay, I may have forgotten my name for a minute. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, the uh, opportunity attacks might kill me if they hit me, but I will run the hob over to Lyle. Alright, opportunity attack number one. Fuck. Hits. And the hob is down. <laughs> I can the norm. Sorry, but it, it, uh, all right, I'm going to sprint to Lyle, but I, uh, that'll take both of my. It'll take my 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 run, my movement, and my act. Actually, uh, Venorin, to be honest, you saw two of your friends go down. Uh, three of your friends uh, fall very very recently. Um, go ahead and roll a d100. Oh no. Eight. Ah. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> um. Uh. Venoran's down. You cast Fireball as a third level spell centered on yourself. <laughs> so we'll yep. play the same session again next week, right, guys? <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. DM's discretion. Wait, wait, wait. Tainted bacon? I actually said... I No, okay. I said I reserve the right to to nudge it up or down one item. So, I'm, be I'm nudging it down. You cast Magic Missile as a fifth level spell. <laughs> uh, yeah. Bye-bye, Raven. Um, in order of... Uh, Looking the most hurt to not the most hurt. 
Um, honestly, the one to the north of Nob is, um, uh, sorry, the one between Nob and Scott's, it looks bad. That's the smallest swarm. The one, uh, behind it, like, to the north of Nob, looks a little well bad off. The rest of them all look fine. Okay. Uh, those two first, and then, um, the rest of them will go, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll actually go ahead and throw, let's see, what is this? It's three plus five is eight. Uh, bolts. Um, so let me do one into the two, one each into the two that look injured. Um, okay. Actually, at the one that's slightly less injured than the other, let me go ahead and do two into it. So that's three okay. gone. And let me go ahead and put. If you want to, if we just to make this easier, if you want to declare that you're not going to send any other at those targets, I'll let you decide the other targets after you hit. You just won't be able to send any more at them. If that seems fair. Sure. Um, well, I mean, they, they're all supposed to arrive at the same time, so let me... Um, well, I just meant so we don't have to keep track of, like... Gotcha. All right, well, well, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so uh, the most injured gets one, the second most injured gets two. Okay. They're, they're still there. <laughs> Actually, no. Sorry, to be honest, uh, the one... No, the one closest to you disperses... The other one disperses as well. Interesting. Um, yeah. All right, cool. So that would be... I can't read its number because Scats is standing on top of it, but that one? Six. six and the one... Uh, Raven's one. Um, and that... I have five bolts, so I'm going to do three into six and two into one. Oh, uh, also, you, sorry. It's plus one per thing, so... If you're sending three, it's 3D4 three, three, three plus three. So ten. I think that worked out either way. Uh, okay. And then, oh, I see. Okay, I, got, I see what you did. Just minus seven. All right. Uh, Scat saving throw. Okay. <laughs> I'm mistake. Why did I lose it just now? It's just a flat d twenty. If you don't remember it. It's rolling. Thirteen. That is one success. Uh, Swarm of Ravens number six is going to attack Sorelia and miss. Five is going to attack Sorelia. Frankly, they're all going to attack her. Actually, no, 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 no. <laughs> one of them, one of them's going to come to, want to come down and t attack Venorin. Uh, they're going to get there. They're going to take an opportunity attack from her great sword on the way. They're going to take another bit of damage. Uh, actually, she, no, she gets two attacks, but not during. Uh, that is her reaction. So I'm going to have the other one come down, too. And then the last one will take an attack on her. And this. All right. Uh, that is it for them. Oh, God, Lyle, please, God, God. please, please roll high. Oh, and Lyle is dead. <sighs> they will save your pinky and find a healer. <laughs> I did say that we would do permadeath in this, didn't I? You did, and I accept it. I'm not exactly attached I, yet. Because I want to give you a level one out, but... Did permadeath you mean is permadeath. To bring him back to life, or do you mean we'd save his pinky and go find a healer to join the group? Now that we have taken <laughs> this, the seat. This is why we need one. <laughs> do you see what happens without a healer? This is what's left of our rogue. <laughs> Uh, no. is, is this means that now no 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 Joker can hey. appear on the watchtower and say there must be some kind of way out of here to you. Mm -hmm. uh, Venorin, who's suddenly in trouble. Uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm gonna try the acid splash again against the two standing on top. So they do a dex save, right? Correct. Or rather, they fail a dex save. <sighs> Hopefully, so I'll. I'll try. There we Fail. go. Oh. Bastard. Path. So I, I was rolling left f first. Actually, no, I'll just... Seriously? Two acid damage? Oh, it's too death. So, believe it or not, that's enough to get it down to half its hit point, so it disperses. Uh, scat, saving throw. We could a really good one. <laughs> hope so. Uh, I mean, eight's not bad, but it's... Not a pass. No. Raven's number six attacks Sorelia. And misses. Uh... Five is going to attack Benorin. 
and miss. Seven is going to attack Cerulea and hit. And eight. She's down. <laughs> I really feel Very like small. I should have used another rage here. I honestly didn't think these ravens were going to be that much trouble. None of us did. Uh, nope. Oh, okay, Lyle. Uh, <laughs> Nub? Don't die. That's pass. Oh. <sighs> Just remove me from the loop. <laughs> That's fair. Oh. Uh, Venorn. It's the only one up. <laughs> Firebolt at the one next. 23 will hit. Uh, Skets. Really big number, really big number. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> I really like Skats. Hmm. Swarm of Ravens attacks Cerulea. Okay. <laughs> she was at one. Now she's. This is so. <sighs> horribly awesome. <laughs> We're being desecrated. Oh man. Venoran, take eight. Oh shit. I'm down. I believe um, that, sir, is what we call in the business a TPK. Uh, ish. Yep. Here's the thing. The ravens have no real interest in killing you. They eat corpses. No, no they don't. These don't. Anybody full of barley? If you're full of barley, you're safe. <laughs> Did I? Oh, you know what, guys? I didn't have Sorelli in the in the initiative order. Eh. No, it matters. Like a lot. Like this is a legit concern. She gets two great sword attacks per turn. And I didn't even notice that I wasn't using them. We just edit that scene out like it never happened. Alright, here's here's the deal. Everyone's at one hit point. Including Lyle. Yeah! Woohoo! This is the level one bullshit, and this is also because I obviously don't know how to design encounters. <laughs> well, or you I, guys how many it. times did you crit, though? Like, that we, couldn't be planned. Got, I think your encounter design was fine. I, I, I think we just got really shitty rolls. Yep. Yeah. You could have put us up yeah. against just about anything. With those kinds and, of rolls, we and were then, And without our Swarm Warden involved in the, the turn order, the compound. There, there, I mean, there you go. There's there's two attacks from her. Twenty twenty two. 2022. 922. Um, okay. I that this is the best I can do. Frankly, I don't feel like writing you a whole new adventure. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is about. You want to be lazy. This is this is level one. It, well, level one fifth edition is very difficult. If everybody here died, somebody would have to come get this watchtower fixed up, and there's clearly a raven still around. I'd like to point out this would have been a perfect opportunity for you to bring in a magical unicorn to heal us all, and you didn't. <laughs> I gave him the wild magic roll. It's not my fault he didn't cho- There must be, like, uh... There must be something on here. There's re- Oh. Oh, if you would die within the next minute. Was but, this uh, balanced for us not having Jamie Lynn here? No, uh, Did it you- was not balanced for her not being here, and it was not balanced for Sorelia not being part of the fight. Well, I, I Her, assume that you hadn't planned on forgetting Sorelli was there. I was just curious if you had been scaling stuff as we've been playing for not having Jamie Lynn. Between four and five players, it isn't a huge difference. But no, I did not plan on there being only four players. So there's actually there's and this was the this was like the main encounter for the evening. So yeah, um, if only my green had worked. <laughs> I can't believe they wouldn't go for the green man. That that was quality barley right there. It was the good stuff, too. It had malted just a little bit, so it had a little bit of that stank to it. Oh, yeah. All right. So here's here's actually how we're going to do this. Uh, you're all at one hit point. Uh, you've basically expended... Well, you expended whatever you expended during the fight. Sorelia did, is actually knocked out. All right. Well, um, let's go shake off the fact that we feel like we've been, you know, killed. And then go uh, <laughs> uh, uh, go help out Cerulea. Uh, she, I will say she's stable. We could. She's just 
We could we just still... loot her and leave her and go back and get a long rest. Right, but she... the watchtower could be beneficial to us since it's supposed to protect the area. She was only going to pay us 10 gold for coming up here. And she yeah, clearly has it on her. We need way more money. I mean, we've saying we give her the potion. I'm just saying, let's make sure she's all right. Oh, no, yeah. I mean, she's clearly not bleeding out. That's that's the limit of what I can do that would be helpful is if she's dying. She's not dying. Well, shall we shall we short rest and see if her condition improves? I mean, a short rest is probably not a bad idea, anyways. Yeah, yeah we're all probably point. a good idea. We're all pretty fucked. <laughs> well, some of you uh, spent hit dice back at the uh, yep the ambush, but not all of you did. Yeah. How many hit dice do we have? Fuck. We have one hit dice of however many D or hit point. D12 for you. Oh, well, I used it. <sighs> yeah, I'm at almost half. You know what it is? It's depressing. Fair enough. Um, at the end of an hour, Sorelia does not appear to be waking up. Um, you actually notice uh, if you... Somebody want to give me a medicine check? Fifteen. Uh, you you realize when uh, she was fighting without her, she she doesn't normally wear a helmet. Um, and when she fell, she actually fell against a a rock, and it looks like she might have hit her head on it. Ooh, subdural hematoma right there. Way to go, pre med. <laughs> yeah, the, take the, her money and the, go. The rest was probably not the best idea. <laughs> Sleep is what you should do right now with this concussion. Uh, so, yeah, you guys should, uh, what do you, what do you guys want to do? Just loot her and leave her. Yeah, pretty much. I'm going to, um, apparently stealthfully give her the potion, which I am in possession of. No, 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 I'm not going to no, 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 no. stop you from doing it, I'm just not going to encourage it either. What if one of us needs it later and we die just because you wanted to save some lady on the ground? Inappropriate? She'll give us another one, or we'll ask her very nicely to give us another one. She doesn't have another one. On her? She wouldn't be out here doing this sort of thing, though, if she didn't have some kind of ties into the hierarchy of River Haven. If we're planning on... I, I know at least I'm going to be sticking around there for a while. It might be nice to actually have an in with them. Uh... Can uh, can Nob give me a um, uh, history check? He can. Seventeen. Uh, you recognize Storm Warden as being the name of one of the ruling houses of Riverhaven. Oh, you know what? I just realized she actually definitely has an in with the hierarchy at Riverhaven. Yep. Uh, so, st- what, what are you stealthing to do? You're stealthing to pour a stealthing to give a potion this- down her gullet. Without um, our less good aligned characters noticing. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Um, so, so if you you, pour, you you give her the health potion and you re-examine uh, the the back of her head and it does its magical stuff and and you know the, she's not bleeding. Um, you know any any wounds that were there have healed. Um, this gets into the question that I brought up the other day about the the idea of like chronic conditions and. Um, long-lasting injuries in a world that has magical healing. Um, she's not at risk of dying, but she's still she's still in a, a wee bit of a coma. Um, she would need the attention <laughs> just, just a little, a little bit. Of a coma. She needs a potion to remove clinical condition? Uh, so she, she needs what page the, is that the on? Ten- <laughs> there is actually remove condition. There's, there's, there's conditions in this. Yeah, world. there's diseases and yeah. curses. And she doesn't. That was the point of the uh, I see. Okay. Um, either way, you, you kind of feel like she would probably need the attention of a higher level healer than yourself. Or, or something, some sort of off-the-shelf potion. Great job wasting her only health potion. I didn't say it didn't help, I just said it. It was sneaky, didn't like you didn't even see it either. <laughs> that actually wouldn't have beat his passive perception, but he was okay with you giving me the potion. Alright. Until it didn't work. Until it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, let's uh, let's get her into town um, and see if uh, they can heal her up there. But if we take her into town, they're going to question if we've taken all of her gold off her. 
Right, which is why we should probably leave some gold on her. <sighs> I put a copper back in her pocket. I said some gold. She is tied to the hierarchy. She's going to have more than a copper piece on her. I put a copper back in her I would, pocket. I would suggest one or two gold pieces should probably still be there. Uh, it's you also don't know what fell out of the pouch as we were walking. It's also worth noting, and this is very true, ravens are very attracted to shiny objects and have been known to steal. And do you feel that, that a shiny copper coin is shinier than a gold copper gold coin? I'm just saying, if uh, all of her gold is accounted for, we could technically blame the raven. So we keep the gold. But not all of it. Yes, all of it. We have some on her person. No. She's got to have a little bit on her, otherwise we're going to get blamed and like, kicked out. Look, we just rip her gold pouch and boom, we're set. All right. We're taking her and her gold, not necessarily together, into town. Exactly. Okay. By what means are you transporting her? Uh, we have a barbarian with us. so I will carry her. Transporting well, I was going to say, obviously not a fucking wagon. <laughs> <laughs> Unless she weighs 20 pounds or less. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'll take from one side. <laughs> uh, amazingly, in full plate, uh, that's, that's despite being a, a th- take it out of <laughs> despite being a thin, a thin, you know, fit lady, uh, in full plate, she weighs a, a, just a touch over uh, twenty. Pounds. Well, the Ravens might have stolen her plate though, if it was shiny. <laughs> so we can <laughs> safely discard of that. <laughs> <laughs> and her plate, inappropriate. <laughs> Okay, so you, you sling her over the, the shoulder of your barbarian. Um, I'm kind of picturing this because, she, you know, she's probably, you know, 5'10", and the, the barbarian's, like, just over three feet. And Someone's yeah, going to be walking like, waist down is just rocks out of the road. Yeah, I kind of picture us. her. Yeah, her head is banging off the ground. <laughs> Scat's going to Carry her from the shoulder <laughs> side. Ant. Okay. Uh, so you guys, you guys begin carrying her... Um, I, I assume you grabbed the thing, the belongings she put down. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, and you spend a good number of hours uh, tromping through the woods uh, with the weight of this young lady. I mean, every uh, now and then I'll I'll, I'll give Scats a hand. Uh, I'll applaud. You know, with our mage hands together, we could actually clap. <laughs> we can totally clap. Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> ten it. pounds at a piece for the clap. <laughs> Team Mage Handler needs to learn how to behave. <laughs> okay, uh, so why don't you give me a? I'm gonna have your, your scats do a strength, just a strength check, uh, athletics check. And, and remember, it should be with advantage because our Mage Hands are, are clapping for her. <laughs> it's not the same rules as Tinkerbell. <laughs> you don't know. You haven't looked it up. You know, if an Ornai used to take a level in Why bar, then it would basically be. Oh. <laughs> nice. All right, the barbarian summons uh, all of her her just brute strength the- and uh, crits her athletics check. I'll just do away with this concept of suffering a level of exhaustion because you nailed that shit. Um, that said, by the time you get start finally uh, getting back to the city, you are growing a bit tired, um, as you know, because you can you can only do that so far. After a few hours of traveling along the forest road, the trees begin to thin and you're able to see the walls and buildings of Riverhaven for the first time. Riverhaven rises above a large adjacent lake fed from a river flowing from the north, with canals dug around the walled perimeter encircling the city. The road leads ahead to a small wooden bridge spanning the canal. Oh, did I? Yes. I missed part of this. Uh, okay, so the first thing you see when you exit the woods is um, there are a lot of people living outside the city walls. There's like an entire kind of uh, tent city. Um, are we going on side of, quest for city planning? <laughs> uh, it's there are uh, between you and the gatehouse are hundreds of tents, covered caravans, and other makeshift shelters, with people carrying firewood and small portions of food sitting and conversing around campfires and uh, putting up new shelters. I'm going to systematically start going to all of the even-numbered tents and saying, calm down. (laughs) Okay. As you continue to carry Sorelia's unconscious body, people can begin to take note of you, uh, and in particular, the uh, person you're carrying. 
Um, a few of them kind of run up and line the road ahead of you. Um, so you, you begin to find yourself walking through a uh, more and more eyes upon you as, as you're walking towards the, the city gatehouse. Hey, rubberneckers, um, any of you medical people? Yeah. Uh, a few of them are holding, like, um, uh, a, a woman grasps a pendant around her neck tightly as her lips whisper an unheard prayer. Uh, as more people around you begin to watch you approach the city, the sound of fast-moving horses draws your attention. Three of them exit the, the guardhouse and across the bridge that, that uh, spans the canal um, at full speed heading in your direction. Uh, you recognize the person on the lead horse as that of Orman. Yeah, the, flag uh, him down. The, wave hands. Yeah. Him. yeah. Uh, you can see that it appears his uh, the wound in his arm has been properly has been heavily bandaged where the crossbow had hit him, or the, the arrow had hit him. Uh, just a few minutes later, he reaches you, and uh, Orman kind of gracefully slides off his horse in one, in one move, already running as his feet hit the ground. She needs uh, immediate medical attention. And uh, a healing potion. More than a po- yeah. Somebody here needs a healing potion. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> Could be anyone. Um, uh, as soon as he realizes, he, he hears what you say, and he, he immediately has a look of relief on his face when he realizes that um, that she's alive. And uh, he says, uh, we must take her to her father. He sends two, he sends the two guards he's with uh, ahead to uh, make a path. He says, uh, fetch the archmage and uh, fetch the priestess. Uh, and they, they run off at full speed, or well, they go back on their horse. Um, at full speed. Uh, he takes a large um, blanket out of one of his saddlebags, and he kind of, he, he motions for you to lay her body on it, and then uh, with the one good this arm he the has... time for a nap? <laughs> with, the, with the one good arm he has, he's going to grab a corner of it, and I think the, the expectation you infer is that if you all carry her together, it'll be easier. Which is probably good because Scats is actually getting to the end of her. Wait, thank um, God she's on. Yeah, we could hey, we could have been doing that for the last several miles. That's I brilliant. literally scattered building materials around the watchtower. <laughs> yeah, but we had a dwarf or a halfling barbarian. You can't beat that for a visual. Uh, are you going to? Are you going to participate? Are you going to help him carry her? I'll lend a hand. Yeah, not how we'll like ways carry his. You don't literally all have to do it, but I mean the party as a whole. Ten is, pounds is continuing. The, the journey you started. Uh, as you finish walking through the encampment, um, you, you start arriving towards the this. So it's basically there's a canal, bridge, gatehouse, and then inside that is the city. Um, at the city gates, a few people stand in line, each turn handing something to the town guard before being allowed to enter the city. As you approach, uh, the same guard yells loudly for people to clear the streets. Uh, in order that you notice is immediately uh, obeyed by the people that you can see from where you are. Uh, you you cross the wooden bridge, and uh, as you're as you're as you actually enter the city, you're entering kind of a, a market district. Um, and Orman's going to ask you what happened as you're walking. Birds, birds, <laughs> demon demon birds or devil birds. I I couldn't tell which it was. Definitely birds. And he kind of looked very confused. He goes, birds? Birds did this? Alfred Hitchcock, man. I told you, that wizard. Demon devil birds. Devil birds, wow. Uh, uh, you continue walking. The streets wind through a market district. Taverns and shops of various sizes offering all manners of goods. Uh, at prices that strike you at somewhat high. You carry Sorelia's body through an open square. Uh, in the middle of which are three humanoid figures made of straw-stuffed clothing, hung from a wooden pole with thin rope nooses. Each bears a symbol on its chest, uh, one of which you recognize as being one on the uh, shoulder blade of Sorelia's armor. Uh, and there's, there's two town guard there already working to take down uh, whatever this display is. As you exit the market district, you pass another bridge over a stone canal, a stone line canal. Either effigies or some sort of medieval sex doll? Uh, they're, more of an, they're more of an effigy. Is it a medieval um, sex doll effigy? As you exit the market district, you pass another bridge over a stone-lined canal, the river water misting the air and contributing to the heavy coating of green moss uh, growing on the far thicker and more intimidating inner walls of the city. Uh, the guards posted at the inner gate stand to the side as you pass. Uh, 
the inner city is comprised of larger homes and manors as well as government buildings, uh, a building that looks like a library, an impressively built temple made of ancient looking stone. Orman appears to be directing you towards one of the larger estates in the area. At the, the top of a small stairway, uh, there are there are large double doors that have already been opened and there are guards standing on either side of it. Ascending the staircase, you enter the main foyer of the house. Elegantly framed artwork hangs on the walls and a number of small statues of varying sizes adorn the room. Hallways extend from this room to the left and right, uh, each with a number of closed doors. In the middle of the room, two tables have been pressed together hastily by nearby house staff, and at Orman's direction, you place Sorelli's body on the table. Um, is there anything... At the moment, you guys appear to be waiting. You know Orman sent somebody to fetch somebody. Um, is there anything you would like to do while you're waiting for people to arrive? I'd like to mention that Raven steal gold. <laughs> Casually. I just want to put this out there. <laughs> I saw a documentary on it. <laughs> it is 100% true. Um, <laughs> Damn. But it's true. But if it's true, it's not deception. Right, but it's building up to a greater plot of deception. See, I'm, I'm seeding oh. the information now so that the lie later will seem more plausible. Fair enough. Um, can I have Scats and Nob do perception checks? Yep. What is perception? I don't know anything. Open your eyes before you do the perception check. <laughs> it does help. Uh, so, Nub, while you're waiting here, um, you actually hear a small noise uh, f- coming from the hallway to your right. Uh, you're the you're the closest person to that hallway. Um, and as you glance down there, you see a uh, a young human girl. She looks to be about five or six. Uh, with dirty blonde hair and messy curls, and the clothes she's wearing slightly dirty and somewhat tattered. Uh, she appears terrified and is staring intently at Sorelia's body. Nahab whispers to her in abyssal, Do you understand me? And she just she just looks at you wide-eyed and confused. Okay, there's a there's a non-demon child down here. Guys? <laughs> uh or a very deceptive demon child. <laughs> Dear God. She's too young to be that bright. Wait, 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 wait. It's... There's no such thing as a non-demon child. What are we talking about? <laughs> of course there is. They could be a devil child. Come on. Right. There's, there's a reason why there's two labels. Different flavors, yeah. Um, really speaking to children in the most disturbing language you can think of, he did not speak to her in infernal. He spoke to her in abyssal. <laughs> he only gave her not night. very <laughs> reassuring. Hey, buddy. I don't think this one should land on me. I'm just saying. I have a minus one to charisma, so don't look at me. Oh, I'll I'll, uh, I'll, I'll step in and, and 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 say it's okay, little girl. We need uh, to go. That's you a deception just, roll. You can use you can use my <laughs> deception roll for that. Okay. <laughs> she believes everything will be okay. Um, do you walk over to talk to her? Like, do you walk over to say that yes. to her? Yes. Okay. Uh, when you do, you kind of see behind her the, the what looks like the door she came out of. It's open just a crack, uh, but inside you can kind of see a couple other small children uh, sleeping, and then there's a couple other uh, like sleeping bags on the floor from what you can see. So that's the pantry? So, if you are not going to address her any further, uh, she's she's content to just uh, <laughs> or devil cocoons. Devil cocoons. <laughs> um, she's content to just stand there. Uh, you know, you don't have to. You don't have to interact with her. Do, do, well, I'm going to ask her, dude. Uh, uh, what's what's wrong? Is she full of uh, speech? No, she can talk. <laughs> not an official. She's, she she asks you if Surlia will be okay. She looks sick. Uh, a doctor is on the way, so we hope so. Um, and she she accepts your answer, um, and she she kind of just says, "I hope she's okay. She's really nice." She'll take a couple steps back towards the room. She, she's aware she should try to stay out of the way. At that point, a half elf, later in years and dressed in deep purple robes trimmed in golden cord, rushes through the doors of the house. Stand back! Stand back! He bellows at uh, anyone who happens to be standing in the way. Um, 
An elven woman and a human male, both much younger and dressed in similar but less ornate robes, follow closely behind, their arms overloaded with alchemy tools and supplies. Uh, the older elf sets down a f the few supplies he carried and begins taking various powders and concoctions from the arms of his associates as if they were little more than wooden shells. Uh, his expert hands work quickly to combine ingredients. Um, as you're watching him do his work, an elven woman in white robes appears in the doorway, and she kind of uh, utters a, a short gasp of shock and, and rushes to Sorelia's side. A, a look of sorrow washes over the silver-haired woman as she cradles Sorelia's face in her pale hands. She speaks in soft whispers, soothing and reassuring words meant for the young woman lying before her. A small pendant around her neck glows softly and identifies her as a cleric in the service of, and I forgot to write down one of the Tagad's names. Insert god name here. Insert god name here. I'd actually had one all picked out. It was going to be like the... Yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out for next time. But now we're... Uh, nobody ended up... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, no, nobody ended up being a cleric, so it kind of didn't matter quite as much because it was going to be whatever, whatever the cleric was. Drew got really close. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd be okay not being that close again. <laughs> <laughs> um, she exchanges a familiar smile with the alchemist before turning to Orman, and with a reassuring nod, uh, says, uh, "Don't worry, she will be fine. Let us do our work." Um, Orman's going to kind of just give a, an appreciative nod back to her. And uh, he comes over and kind of stands with the rest of you uh, out of the way. He's going to, in a, in a soft voice, let's see, he's standing next to... We'll have him stand next to Scats. Um, and he's going to just kind of say in a quiet voice, uh, when her father arrives, he'll want to know what happened. T Tyrell Storm Warden uh, is a military man. Perhaps you should explain. And you kind of infer that because you're the basically the strongest one, like the physically strongest one in the group, you're the one he'll most directly identify with. Lovely. Or at least that's what, or at least that's what Orman thinks. Lovely. Meanwhile, I'm going to cast Mage Hand, have it flip over on its fingers, and start pacing in the air. <laughs> um, through a door on the upper floor. This, so this is one of those classic mansion houses where there's like a, a large area when you enter the house, and then two like not spiral, but curved staircases to either side. Um, bursting through a door on the upper floor and barreling down the stairway, a man slightly out of place for the decor of the home he owns moves more swiftly than his excessive size would suggest he could. His beard and unkempt, in hair unkempt, and hastily pulling a robe over what is clearly his sleepwear, he stomps onto the landing of the steps and uh, stands behind, steps up to stand behind the silver-haired woman um, who turns to him and repeats the the assurance that he had just given to that she had just given to Orman. So, so basically, you know, just just let us do our work. Tyrell rubs his, his hand nervously through his beard, a look of concern slowly replaced by well practiced a well practiced stoic look, betraying no emotion. Uh, and at that point, he approaches your group. This is the father guy, right? This is yes. This appears to be uh, Sorelia's father. Okay, then I guess I will step up. Uh, extend my hand looking for a handshake, obviously and um, but she'll return say, we were hired by your daughter to help with the watchtower when we arrived there we were attacked by birds, which nearly killed us all and we barely made it out alive your daughter is a hero and then, you know <laughs> the little, at the end of the voice and uh, with that, he's going to... You, you can't read his face at first. Um, he's very stoic. He, he's kind of processing the information, processing that his daughter is in a bad way. After a moment, he's going to take a knee and uh, put his hands on your shoulders and, and just say, you know, thank you, halfling. And uh, kind of, you know, give you, give you a manly pat on the shoulder. Her name is Gats. Um, FYI, sir. Hmm? Her name is Gats, <laughs> FYI, sir. Not half Yes. His 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 name? I, I oh his sorry. Gender yeah. Scat. yeah, what is Scat's gender? Uh, is she. Scat's male? Okay, Scat's is female. Okay, Scat's is a female. All right. His his tap was manly. <laughs> <laughs> not. <laughs> I just mean he did it. I was a manly tap. Like, like, <laughs> it wasn't a tender embrace. It was a, like a slap on the shoulder, like you know. 
and uh, yeah, so he, he thanks you profusely for, for bringing his daughter back to him. Um, that seems to be the thing of, of most concern. You know, he, he acknowledges that you were helping with the Watchtower. He was obviously aware of that, um, of what she was planning to do. After, after a few moments, uh, when he finally kind of accepts that the healers have everything in hand, um, he asks you if the Storm Warden flag is flying above the Watchtower. Unfortunately not. We decided at the, uh, when we had all barely recovered and your daughter was unconscious that the best thing to do would be to get her back to town as quickly as possible. And I'm going to leave out the part where we let her lay on the ground for an hour. That's it's fair. Very That's very short fair. rest. <laughs> um, and he is going to say, I guess the Grey Cloaks will be able to claim the tower in the morning. That's unfortunate. Either way, I can't fault you for well, Tell them to be uh, careful. What you Several did. of the uh, clusters of killer attack ravens dispersed and are probably going to regroup at some point. Their group will be well-armed and well-equipped. I'm sure most of them will make it back. So not level one adventurers? He kind of isn't in the mood to uh, to discuss that further. Um, I see. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, so at, at this point, uh, Sorelia begins to kind of come around. Uh, Tyrell runs off to, to be by her side. Uh, as he's actually, as he's walking away, Ormond's going to stop him and say, um, I believe these, these people were promised money for their services. <coughs> no, um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, uh, Tyrell's going to ask, uh, he's still kind of addressing, um, Scats preferentially. I mean, anybody can talk to him, but that's who he's going to. Um, and he asks, you know, how much How much does our family owe you? Old deception. I don't have good deception. Kath- oh, he's talking to me still? Yeah, yeah. well, pref- anybody can answer, but he's going to address you. He, he likes you. The okay, You're the most sh- open about being strong. <laughs> how much should we say? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me check with um, let me check with everybody. See if we all agree on how much we agreed to work for. <laughs> Before you, you answer, remember? <laughs> who when she when she made the deal with you? Who was there? I thought we, uh, we were all there, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Just, who else was there? The the guard. <gasps> oh, so I mended. Let's not lie. Yeah. <laughs> let's not lie. Ten gold, sir. And two healing potions, but we had to use one of them on her. Um, and he looks back at you almost offended. Um, he says, uh, 10 gold pieces is appropriate for clearing a watchtower. You did much more by bringing my daughter to me. And, uh, he, he pulls a small coin purse from his pocket and he says, there should be at least 50 here. And he, he tosses it to, to scats. Oh, sorry. What? He just threw you a coin purse with 50 gold. Oh, in it. thank you, sir. It's so very kind of you. He's paying us for the potion that saved his daughter's life, and, and I hope that's it. Wow. Or Orman okay, will give let's you. Let's file the, this under a way of terrible people. And a health potion. Are you actually mentioning the health potion? Because you you keep doing a uh, like a like a joke cough. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm trying to subtly persuade him. I got a um, kick ass yeah. persuasion roll. <laughs> That's a 50 gold piece potion that we poured down her throat. That's true. That was hers in the first place, but you're right. Well, it yeah. wasn't hers uh, anymore. Um, Orman, Orman says, uh, let him be with his daughter. I'll, I'll make sure we're settled up. Excellent. So we don't have to pump her stomach and refill that vial. Um, at this point, as if as an afterthought, uh, Tyrell asks Orman if uh, anyone saw you bring them uh indicating the four of you into the city to which uh, Orman basically says there may be ways to bring somebody of as high importance as your daughter into the city without anyone noticing but I don't know them half the city would have seen us and the other half will have heard of it by morning and uh, Tyrell kind of looks disappointed and and addressing still scats says the really bad times have fallen upon the city. We're unable to allow people who aren't citizens within the walls uh, overnight. Uh, I I hate to do this to you after all that you've uh, you've done for my family tonight and or today, but you'll have to be outside the city. Bro, I just carried your for daughter evening. for hours, and I have 
barely any health left. Cut us some slack. Uh, give me a persuasion check. Uh-oh. Let's go to minus one. On the persuasion. Oh, nice. Nice. Persuade with their axe. <laughs> okay. Uh, you crit. So, of course, I'm obliged to, uh... How is it you keep managing to crit on persuasion? <laughs> it's impressive, seeing as I have a minus one on it. So Orman is going... Uh, sorry, Tyrrell is going to step back. Like, he knows what he just said to you was uh, was really unfair. Uh, to be clear, you, you didn't get the impression he wanted to say it. He turns to Orman and, and says, um, don't we know somebody who might be able to put them up for the night? Uh, and Orman's going to kind of silently nod uh, and indicate that the rest of you should uh, should follow him. Is, is everyone going? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, so you follow him and you, you leave. Uh, you, right now you're in the inner city, the inner part of the city. Um, there's a, a, a thick old wall around the inner part of the city. Um, and then you cross a, a bridge over a, a small uh, canal that's been dug. Um, and then that puts you in the outer part of the city, but you're still within the city walls. Um, and then outside the city walls is where the people were living in tents and so forth. And... Uh, you, you walk back through part of the market district and um, Orman steps aside for a moment to a uh, uh, a vendor who you see uh, hands him a few um, healing potions. He doesn't seem to pay for them, so you don't know what that, you know, he either knows this person or they owe the family favors, whatever. Uh, he comes back and he's going to hand you two healing potions. I'll take one of them again. Does somebody else want the other one or should I hang on to both? You're probably a good choice, given that you're probably the least likely to be stabbed. Mm-hmm. I do tend to stand clear. That's fair. Um, you you end up in a uh, an area of the city that's more residential areas. It doesn't look particularly high class, uh, but it is what it is. And um, uh, at one corner, on the corner, there's, there's a track a, homes and occasionally a gas station. So on the on a, there's one corner where there's a small um, there's a small inn. And uh, Orman leads you into the building. There's a woman. She appears to be she's she's behind the counter, and uh, she immediately runs out. And um, you notice a very strong familial resemblance. Uh, looks just like Orman, just you know, a woman in thirty years older, and it's very clearly his mother. Um, what a lovely beard she has. Yeah, and so Orman does that thing that everyone does, where they're like their mother's being overly affectionate, so they're really shy about. <laughs> Um, oh, I'm working. And he, he explains the situation. He he says that, uh, you know, these people need someplace safe, dry, comfortable for the night. And she, she repeats, she said, you know, I can't do this for long. You know, they don't let people stay in the city after dark. And Orman kind of says, for tonight and, and we'll deal with tomorrow, tomorrow. Uh, and with that, you have secured reasonably comfortable lodgings for the evening. But at the expense that we apparently have to sleep with Orman's mom. What? I mean, uh, just like every weekend. Only one. Right. Um, so I think that's a good place to, to end, both for the time and for other reasons. 